country comme vous. What did he say to us then? That he loves his country. He said they do a lot more than that. Yeah, well, I have to pray see it for the subtitles. You know, I'm surprised you're bothered to watch. And I can't understand how you can follow it all in a foreign language. Well, that's why they have subtitles. Have you finished that? I think you can get back to sleep now. I might. And even I might not. She's not in yet. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Why well, aren't you worried about her? Roaming the streets on the road in the early hours. Well, it's hardly the early hours, is it? It's not midnight yet. Well, the pizza's have been over hours. She's gone for a bite to eat and she's spinning it out. It's what's known as teaching your husband a lesson. Well, can you blame her? You should have gone with her. Every right to be upset. That, Uncle Albert, is entirely between Deirdre and myself. Now, shall I take you back to bed or what? No, I'll go. I'll go, I can manage. Flipping rubbish. Ensemble, nous avons lutté. Ensemble. Much more relaxed now. I would be if I wasn't watching the clock. Well, don't. I told you to take you home soon, didn't I? Now, you came here to wind down. So, wind down, woman. I like being with you. You're easy to talk to. Yeah, I do feel better. Thanks. Good. That's what friends are for. But for the board wind therapy to be really effective, you should really take the full course of treatment. I'm not even going to ask what that would involve. Pity. Mike. I know you've got to be going. Well, I have. Are you hungry? What's that got to do with it? Well, I suddenly realise I'm absolutely starving. I haven't eaten all night. And, well, if I'm going to drive with all this booze... Well, look, I'll, I'll get a taxi. No, 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 hang on. Look, I told you I'd take you. But first of all, join me in the cheese butty. Eh? It's a nice bit of Lancashire with a real bite to it. Hey, that reminds me of you, come to think of it. <laughs> Is this a plot? Of course it is. A plot to keep your enforced cheese butties down your throat. Didn't you guess? All right, then. But I'll have to help you. It'll have to be quick. Honestly, I must be potty. Well, perhaps we both are. Hey, a right potty bear. You never change, do you? Always clowning around. Everything's always a big joke. Not everything. Some things I take seriously. Perhaps that's when I clown around the most. Oh, yeah. It's been a lovely oh, no, party, Mrs. Walker. Do you know, even Mrs. Arthur comes to put on a better spread. Oh, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Elgin. Hey, there's a ton of stuff left, though. You're not one to go into waste, will you? Of course not. No, help yourself. Get your inhibitions, Tina. Let it all hang out. Wiggle your bum about and shake your hips. What am I? You must be joking. A nice little quack pop drop my ass, darling, to Mrs. Walker. Indeed, dear, absolutely. Yeah. Dancing was far more elegant in our day. Well, everything was. We had style. Oh, I don't know. I think this sort of music's very catchy. Yes. Oh. They call it Reggie Beat. Reggie Beat. Yeah. Yeah. No, Reggie. no, they're Rasty Crucian's place. I've seen them on top of the pops. <laughs> That's a girl that'll do their wider little bodies will beat them fatties any day. Oh, I've always had a natural sense of rhythm. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. So what are the fatties, if you don't mind? Well, you were going on about your big fat backside, Whoa. weren't you? I don't know why you're being so sensitive. It's me that has to take it from Lynch all the time, haven't I? I think, possibly, Slade, we are a little old-fashioned, and we think that ladies can indulge in a little jocular teasing, but we do expect men to be far more gallant. Oh, it's been a long day. Oh, are you off to bed then, Mrs Walker? Oh. All good things must come to an end, dear. Yes, no, yeah, you're quite go. right, Mrs. No. Walker. There's no point in you overtiring yourself. <laughs> Off you go, them dancers. Fred here will look after us in his usual gallant fashion. Won't you, Fred, first? Okay. Yeah, we won't stop long, Mrs. Walker. And thank you for a lovely evening. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, I, and thank blessed. you for letting me take them mince pies home for oh. uh, Eddie and Stan. Yes. Did I say that? Well, you did say you didn't want anything going to mm. waste, and I don't oh, think yeah. anybody here could eat another well, bite. Well, oh. Speak for yourself, then. Just speak for yourself. Hey, 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 I oh, don't know don't about you, more. Betty, but I'm, I'm getting my second wind. It must be all that exercise. Uh, no, thank you, love it. Oh, I, I it must be my that. metabolism, you know. I don't eat all that much. No. I bet I don't eat half as much as Hilda does it. It's just like a flaming whippet. Hey, give over. 
<laughs> I've seen you knocking back them chocolate digestives I have. You want to have a bit more willpower, you, you know, Betty. Oh? You want to lose a couple of stone. Have a belated New Year's resolution, oh. you know. Get a couple of stone off. Yeah. <laughs> It'll do us all a favour. There'll be more room behind the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make a resolution and not to mind your own blooming business. Oh, and behave yourself a bit more in future. Who should I do behave myself? When do you? Lying and skiving and getting no. up to all your crafty tricks. No. You know, like I in that car, Mrs Walker's car after that boy. Well, well, <laughs> I've got the water. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dear. Mm. Now, don't bother to start clearing tonight. You're no. all far mm. too tired. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Ogden will do it in the morning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Mrs. Ogden. Well, in that case, Mrs. Ogden's going to take the rest of the trifle and oh, all them big spices. Thank you. Oh. Hey. Oh. Oh. You did that deliberate then, didn't you? Don't be so damn silly. I didn't even know she was there. Are you wrong? She didn't hear. It makes no difference. You did it deliberate just to try to drop me in it. That's what you did. Oh, you're going to be like that. I'm not stopping here listening to all this rubbish. Oh, Betty. No. Betty well, Cox. Cox. Oh, don't break Gerard. heart up. Look, it's broken Sorry. up already as far as I know. Where's my coat? No, love, no. At least if you're going to go home, don't go on your own at this no, don't time go of night. On your own. Fred will run you. Fred will run. Oh, he didn't bother. I'm going to ring for a taxi. Get off. Now, see what you've been and gone and done, big gob. Mm. You go and apologise to her. <laughs> well, I echoes like. Oh. Hmm. I didn't realise how hungry I was. I hardly had any tea either. Well, I was working. What's your excuse? Mm. You'll think I'm dead childish. I doubt it. Well, you were right. I had got myself all wound up before I came here. Which is why you came here. Which is why I came here. It was all over summer and now, really. I mean, Ken had said he'd take me to the pictures, and then at the last minute he decided there was something he'd rather see on TV instead. That was all. <laughs> I mean, he would have taken me another night. Not as if I had to behave like a spoilt little kid who couldn't get her own way. Is that how you think you behave? I could have been a bit more understanding. I mean, he does work very hard. Well, so do you. Yeah, he was probably just tired. I mean, he doesn't like going out much anyway. Actually, you'd be amazed what a homebody he's become lately. You know, my mum wanted to go, to go to her club at Christmas, but he preferred his own fireside. Mind you, why, uh, yeah, I knew all that about him when I married him. I mean, that was one of the things I liked about him, the fact that he was steady and reliable. Well, you always know where you are with Ken. Not like with me, you mean? Actually, I meant not like with Ray. Always a fly by night. Yeah, I suppose so. You know, at the start, I was insane about him. Even after we got married, you know, I was... I don't think I was ever totally sure of Ray. Yeah, but isn't that what we sometimes find exciting, eh? That element of uncertainty? All right for a romance, not for a marriage. Oh, come on. All marriages need a bit of stimulation from time to time. Especially marriages. No one should take anyone for granted. Well, Ken doesn't. Sweetheart. I never mentioned Ken. Mike, um, if you've finished, I've really got to be going. I don't want to let him upset you, Betty, love. You know what he's like when he's sucked too much? Mm. He'll have forgot by me. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Get off, that'll be me taxi. Hey, oh. You're getting a bit of overtime in, darling. Oh, am I so known you get him? It's turning into that kind of night. Oh, go back to the party, Chuck. I'll be all right. I love it. Hey, is there a party oh. going on? No, there isn't. <laughs> hey, are you taking me then? Your service, darling. Come on, then. Hey, there's room for another one if you want to squeeze in. No, I'm stopping on for a bit. Night, night, Betty, love. Don't let fat so bug you. He's not worth it. knows me better than that. Trust. Probably a word you don't understand. What exists between two people who are gonna get married. I mean, he's not having to worry what the other one's up to. Not having to care. Not having to be afraid. Not having... Look, stop and have a drink. Have another nightcap. There's plenty of booze. Hilda will stop for a bit, won't you, Carl? I reckon she goes for your type on the quiet. Big, daft and flabby. <laughs> no, it's not the type I go for, but it's the type I get. <laughs> you want to stop out a bit longer, Cock? Make him jealous, it might just do a bit of good. Jealous? <laughs> do you know, if I was to tell him I was running off with the tally man, 
The only thing he said be, have a left his dinner in the oven. Mm. Who the heck's this? Oh, it's probably Betty coming back. I mean, second thoughts about swanning off like she did, that's She it. is the last person it'll be. And I haven't finished with you on that score. I shall expect you to make your peace with her in the morning. What's to do with you, Lynch? It's got a lot to do with me. Any aggro in here, I always cop for it. And aggro is bad for my beauty. It gives me horrible little frown lines on my alabaster forehead. <laughs> Go on, see what it is. It's probably the local Bobby come for a free fight, if truth no. What's to do? Oh, hey, I'm not too late. Hey. I got back as quick as I could. Oh. Still, it won't take me. You want to catch up now? I know it's past the witching hour. I know I've had a few, but I think I'm missing some of here. Yeah, you have been, darling. But you won't be now. That's exactly why I'm here. Duckworth to rescue. Who sent for you? Blondie did. You've got your wires crossed, Flower. Come on, there's no need to be coy. I saw that little look on your face. Look, the only thing this shindig's been missing is a right little raver like me. Hey, Elder, am I right or what? You are looking very charming this evening, Elder. Oh. Is that a new frock? Oh, well, yes, it is. Come on, Ducky, it's a staff new, is this? Yeah, oh, but I've just took your mate home, haven't I? Practically makes me one of the family, doesn't it? Very classy, that, Elder. Oh. Very classy. Would you like a mince pie? So, there you are, see? Somebody loves me. Come on, let's have a bit of music. No, get off! And then he wrote, it's too late. Yeah, yeah. It's never too late. The best is yet to come. Huh? Wow. Look, I know. What we need here is a superstar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, appearing for one night and one night only, that dynamic personality, star of stage, screen and bathtub, Jack, Mr. Sex Bomb, don't Are you going to sing for us? Well, I do qualify for that title on two counts, love, but I don't think they'd let me demonstrate the other one in here. Stop it, will you? You'll get a shot, you will. Shut your face, misery. There's no harm in a sing song. Give him a drink. All right, give the furnished a drink. Come on. Right, ladies. Angelo. What's your pleasure? Down, uh, you? Do, 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 do one of them you didn't dance. Any. Which one was that? Well, I know, I know what we'll do. She'll be down. Coming round, 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 was it any good? In parts, yeah. Yours? Yes, was. I enjoyed it. Uh, where'd you get to afterwards? Well, as a matter of fact, I... Uh... <laughs> Poor old Uncle Albert was getting quite worried. Weren't you? Well, I told him you'd met a pal and he'd gone for a bite to eat. Yeah, that's exactly what I did do. I'm sorry I didn't go with you, though. That's all right. Maybe on Saturday? Yeah, sure. Anyway, I'm glad you had a good time. Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I had a very enjoyable evening. There, I see. You didn't need me at all. You're probably better off with your girlfriend. You can both weep into your hankies together. Right, I'm off out. You coming? Yeah, in a minute. <laughs> Are you screeching for, Hilda? My head's a bit fragile this morning. Oh, what do you think mine's like? And it's no better for seeing this lot. Look at it. Just look at I it. I have looked, which is why I'm out there and not in here. Where's she, then? <laughs> Don't suppose she'll soil her lily white hands with a drop of washing up water? She hasn't surfaced yet, but if you're that interested, I can tell you precisely when she will. When the last plate has been dried and the last crumb has been hoovered up. That's when she'll put in an appearance. Yeah, well, I'm not clearing it up. Oh. Well, I think she's under a slightly different impression, seeing as how you are the cleaner. Well, it wasn't last night. Last night I were a guest. And this morning, go oh, first cinders, you are back to being a cleaner again. I suppose we should give you a hand, seeing as we helped to make the mess. Very good of you, I'm sure. I did say we, not me. Fred! Oh, don't. <laughs> Fred! Get your big fat body through here on the double! Hilda. You start washing, I'll start clearing. All right. Hey, what's to do with you, Lynch? You two screaming like a couple of flaming banshees, she'd be going spare. 
She'll be losing her beauty sleep. She will have her earplugs in and her sleeping mask on. She'll be dead to the world. Get that Uber plugged in. What, what me? Yes, you. We're giving Hilda an hand with this lot. Well, give over. That's a woman's job. Where's Betty? She's not come in yet. And it wouldn't surprise me if she didn't come in. The mood she went home in last night. Now, are you going to get stuck in or should I get physical with you? Oh, what a flaming nuisance. All right. It's worth having a blooming party with all this lot to do. What did you say, Fred? Oh, I was just saying, Mrs. Walker, it's always, always nice to have a party. <laughs> really? Well, you could have shown your appreciation better by behaving accordingly. <laughs> now, well, we did tell you last night, Mrs. Walker, nobody invited Jack Duckworth. He invited himself. Yeah. And it was obvious from that touching little scene I witnessed that you all did your best to discourage him. Well, it was a party. It yeah. was indeed. Was being the operative word. It's the last party I shall give for a long time. <laughs> Where's Elizabeth? Ah, oh, well, now, <laughs> that's where we might just have a, another little problem, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I can see you've got a problem. Right, have a look at these when you've got a minute, will you, love? Ah, <clears throat> love. Oh, she's just telling me her daughter's expecting twins. She's already got two under three. Rather her than me, that's all I can say. Well, what are they? All these bargain breaks, you know. Weekends in posh hotels. Everything thrown in. Rail fares and all, if you like. You're not asking me to go with you, are you? I might if I thought you would. No, I just thought I'd like to go somewhere quiet, you know, a bit Lake District, perhaps somewhere down in Warwickshire. Uh, anywhere's quiet this time of year. Well, you can even go to London, you know. They're throwing a show as well. You wouldn't want to do that on your own, would you? Well, I might. Be a change. And if you're not going with me, well, what option have I got? Mm, I don't know, Alf. Keep talking. The way I feel, maybe a few days away is just what I need at the moment. Are you all right, love? Yes, I'm fine, taking a notice. Well, you were a bit quiet when you came in this morning. And you're complaining? I thought that was what you wanted. No, I'm... I'm just a bit tired, that's all. Oh, kept you out late last night, did he? What? Ken, you said he were taking you out last night. Oh, no, uh, he didn't go. I went on my own in the end. Ah, yeah. Well, it does no harm, you know. I mean, you don't want to be in each other's pockets all the time, get away on your own. I mean, me and Reenie often used to have a night by ourselves, you know. Well, I'd go out with the lads, she'd go out without her pals. You both feel better for it. Yeah, of course you do. You must feel very gratified, Kenneth. Well, I must say, we did better than we expected. The raffle alone raised quite a bit. Well, everybody benefits, don't they? I mean, the children's charity got a healthy donation. People came to dance and had an enjoyable evening. It's the ideal way to raise funds. Maybe you should have charged for your staff do last night on the same principle. Uh, have I said something wrong? No, just a couple of sore heads, which reminds me. Uh, did you tell us, Elizabeth? <laughs> she's on her way. She's sorry she's late, but she had a very bad night. And when she arrives, you know what I expect, do you, Fred? Yes, Mrs. Walker. What do I expect, Fred? An apology, Mrs. Walker. Precisely. Do I gather the evening was not without incident? Oh, now that can't be put right with a couple of human sacrifices. Yes, so oh, great white god from the sky, what is your pleasure? Where's my miss? Oh, Elder's your pleasure. She will be chuffed to hear that, not to say astonished. I want my dinner, don't I? I'm afraid she's been delayed, Miss Robin. She's been trailing up after last night's party. Oh, I'm hungry. I would have thought the amount of leftovers that Mrs. Ogden took home with her last night would feed you for a week. I had them for breakfast. Trifle. You had sherry trifle for your breakfast. You great big disgusting pig of it. Oh, with me surprise. I'm sorry I'm late, Mrs. Walker, but um, I quite understand it. Now you are here, could you possibly take over? My head is splitting. It'll take me weeks to get over last Too night. Too much to up last night, my girl, is it? Aggravation, Miss Walker. Aggravation is the sole cause of my malaise. Yes, well, why don't you go inside, Mrs. Walker, put your feet up with a nice cup of tea and forget all about it? I'll try, love, but it isn't easy. Oh, heck, it's not going to get any easier. What's the mini ha ha do you want? I've had warmer welcomes off my mother in law. I should think so, and all. Busting in here last night and dropping us all in it. What did I do, eh? Did I get my Stanley knife out and rip up all your furniture? Did I go and spray rude words all over your bog walls? No. All as I did was liven this lot up with a bit of a sing song, for which people have been known to beg. On occasion. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a hanging offence to me. Hey, yeah, there speaks a reasonable man. But our esteemed employer, on the other hand, is neither a man nor reasonable. But you still love me, don't you, Blue Eye? Me? I love everybody, Cock. Heaven help me. Somebody has to. 
Oh, lovely. I've forgotten the mushrooms. Will you run in and fetch them for me? They're in the little basket on the counter. All right. Hello there. Hi. Everything all right last night? Oh, yeah, fine. Uh, listen, thanks for last night. I, I really enjoyed it. Any time. But cheese butties aren't my entire repertoire, you know. I also do the most fantastic baked beans. Also? Yeah, and my gin soup <laughs> out of this world. <laughs> oh, great. Thanks, love. Right. Well, I'll be seeing you now. Yeah, right. Look after your mummy, won't you, Tracy? Yes. She's a great girl, you know. You know, I couldn't help feeling sorry for Hilda today. What's so special about today? She's pathetic every day, eh? She cleaned Mike Baldwin's flat first thing this morning. Then she comes in here and does a longer stint than usual. Then she has to go home and give Big Belly his dinner. Then she has her Mrs Lowther's at Goldenhurst. And all that with a thick head. So? So she's not getting any younger. And I'm not getting any younger, am I? And I've got a thick head, haven't I? And I work here, don't I? Nobody's giving me any flipping sympathy. Yes. Fred, Elizabeth is going home now. Oh, I. I believe you have something to say to her. Indeed, bother. Fred. Well, I'm, I'm sorry if you thought I were being rude. Thought you was? Well, I mean, I've just lost my rag. You know, you're dropping me in it like that, you know. Don't be absurd. How can Elizabeth possibly do something like that? Well, let's just say that she won't be very discreet. <laughs> oh, let's do talking about being discreet. Well, I mean, when you get up to all your dodgy tricks, we all get involved one way or another. Don't poke your nose in, that's all. Oh, no. Oh, Betty. What am I going to do? Oh, Betty, how am I going to get out of oh, this keep one? keep your trap shut, will you? You can play it close to your chest when it suits you, doesn't it, when it's your private life? What's that supposed to mean? Button it, Fred. Never mind button it. What about that fella that came a couple of months ago? That, that, that fella, that Ted fella, the, go on, the father of that kid of yours. What about him? You're not exactly blameless, are you? Oh, no. You keep your private life to yourself, don't you? But when, it, when it's mine, you, you're slagging me and blagging it from the chimney tops, aren't you? How the heck did he... Oh, Betty, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean no harm. You know me, I... Well, I thought I did. I thought you were my friend and I could trust you, but... I were wrong on both counts. Elizabeth, wait. No, I'm sorry, Mrs Walker, to let you down, but I'm sure you'll get somebody else. Elizabeth, dear, I'm sure we can talk this over. Look, Please. There's, there's been too much talking already, Mrs Walker. No. I'm going home. And I've got no intentions of coming back. Bye-bye. <laughs> what it is to be a kid, eh? All the time in the world. Yeah. We've been rushing through these trays for the last ten minutes, if you believe it or not, and all for 5p. You know, going by Arthur Scargill, that makes my basic pay 30p an hour. Well, go on, then. I'll throw in a productivity bonus. Give us a packet of scars. <laughs> in fact, I'll make your day. Make it too. Right. No help today, then. What did you mean? No, no. I spent uh, on your own, are you? I mean, she still comes in, does she? Why, oh, she's regular. She don't come in till later on, though. Ah, well, grit your teeth. You'll get through. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Alf. What do you want? Is there anybody there? Hey? Is there anybody there? No, I'm in the shop by myself. Why? Because I've not got my face on, have I? Here, cop hold of that. You want to get your skates on? It's half past nine already. And it's my day off today, I told you. No, oh, I. So it's just you? Me and the stars. That's if we can find any in the daytime. Is it? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's you and the flipping stars because I'll be rushed off your feet in here. Dear is not coming in till later, you know. You're an ungrateful so-and-so. I don't want you yet. Any road. I've still got to make myself look beautiful, which takes a bit longer than it did. While I'm here, pass me a packet of them beef burgers out at Freezer. We'll have them for us dinner. Oh, can you do a few chips as well, love? You see, I don't need Chanel number no. five to weave my web around, fellas. Just five pound of King Edwards and a chip. Is that, Mum? Them's on. Right, Lynch, I've seen you. Let's be having you. What do you want? I want you in there. I've got a message from the Queen Mother. She wants you in. Oh, tell her to go on wanting. Hey! Don't you weigh me. I'm not your flaming skivvy. No, but you're hers, aren't you? That's what you're getting paid for. Not on your life, Buster. Hey, 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 hey. This is a shop, you know. Not the flipping houses of Parliament. Just get him out of here. Oh, don't tell me you lot are still at it. Don't blame me, Alf. Out! 
Listen, I'm on me Todd there. There's Betty Jack to jobbing, there's Mrs Walker having one of her flaming turns. And I am having my day off. So go back to your leader and tell her to tickle herself. Oh, I'm likely to do that, Anna. You come in and you tell her. Look, G, you can stand there till you're rooted to the spot. I am not coming in today. Have you got it? Or do you want it tattooing? Heck. Oh, why do we have to work with flaming women? Well, let's just be thankful the shop wasn't full of customers. It's not funny, Alf. I've had it up to here with that lot down there. Now, if anybody asks for me, I am out. Right for the day. I'll show them. They got this little place off the kitchen, what they call the utility room. It's got the washing machine and the tumble dryer and one of them big freezers. Please, Mrs Ogden, I feel I know Goldenhurst rather more intimately than the lady of the house. I thought you'd be interested. Did you? Well... She says it's a day off. Well, we know it's a day off, but is she coming in? No. No? Is that all she said? No? No, well, she's more or less dug her heels in, Mrs Walker. Oh, where are the loyal employees of yesteryear? Hmm? Where indeed? I'll have to have some help, Mrs Walker. I mean, I, I can't cope on my own. When you're through we the back, I'm doing the coping. I'm on my own. We have got to cope. I am not engaging temporary employees because of this stupid situation and more trouble than they're worth. Oh, well, I can give them behind the bar if you like. Oh, give over, Hilda. It's help we want, not flipping hindrance. Don't be so damn cheeky, you. Nothing clever about pulling pints and opening bottles, you know. Good job for you and all you flipping ignoramus. Don't you flipping ignoramus, please, but... Please, please, Now, this is just the atmosphere that is sending our customers off the premises, and I will not have it. Do you hear me? The only way to solve our problem is for each of us to double our efforts, and I mean all of us. So, Mrs Ogden, please forget your beloved golden hearse for half an hour and clear this place up. And, Fred, you see to the optics. I'm going for a lie down. Now then, you be a good girl for your Uncle Albert, won't you? Yes. <laughs> She's always a good little girl, aren't she, Lola? Yes. Oh, is she? Well, you're lucky then, because she isn't for me. And no shouting and screaming in the library or else Mrs Guthrie will choke you out. There you are. See if you can get her some Janet and John books. She knows which ones she's read. Yes, I know an old. Oh, I can't tell you two anything, can I? Go on, then. Fur of you. Be back for half past twelve or else you get no dinner. Come on, love, come on. We're normally not wanted, don't we? <laughs> bye bye, love. Second poster's come. Yeah, it's all right, I've got it. <coughs> Looks like your mother. Ciao. I believe that when I hear it. Town Hall. I wanted to find space for some whiskered lecturer. Home computer operating made easy, like as if. What's your mother got to say? She says they had a marvellous time at Christmas. Yeah, well, that's only to be expected. Don't be clever. She says the invitation still stands. Why don't we pack up and go there for a couple of days? What? I said the invitation still stands. Why don't we go there for a couple of days? What, now? Well, it's as good a time as any. No, not for me it is, love. I'm up to my ears in this night school programme. Why don't you go? Take Tracy. I'll look after the old fella. I don't want to take Tracy. Not on her own. I want you to come with us. Emily will look after Uncle Albert. She promised the last time. Love, I'd love to come if my job had only let me, but um, it won't. Fine, please. Wait your sweat, Oggy. Get to the back of the queue. I would do it. I wouldn't go, go Stanley. He's short stuff. Oh, no, yeah. Well, large scotch. I'll buy you one, Freddie, but you wouldn't have time to drink it. Don't worry, I'll find time. You couldn't find time to pull me my pint, could you? Serving them over there. I said better. I tell you, I'm serving them over there. Flaming, Lord. I've been stood here since last night. Forget it. Well, you lost a good customer there, Frederick. <laughs> good riddance. Well, that's the way to boost trade. Can we have the same again, please? Oh, what do you think we are doing? I wouldn't love unless you were banking on being late back, and I wouldn't advise that. Um, we'll sit down, shall we? No, we're not going to be long. We'll stand at the bar. Hello, get your drink. Well, thank you for that kind thought, but you are safe. As my old grandma used to say, it's easier to pass a camel through the eye of a needle than it is to get a drink in the rover's return. You are 17th in the queue. <laughs> I thought they looked a bit thin on the ground. Well, I wouldn't exactly say he's thin, but he is by himself. You see, Betty's gone. Bet's playing hard to get, and God knows where Annie is. But as much as I'd like to stay, business is calling. It's not only calling, it's positively shouting. 
And without business, there is no pleasure, as my old grandma used to say. She talked a lot, your old grandma, didn't she? She did. And I'll tell you what else she used to say. Happiness is where you find it. Well, good luck, you two. I hope you get a drink. Sounds a bit desperate, doesn't he? Hmm? Mike, all that flip talk, covering the inadequacies of life, as Freud's old grandma used to say. I should have thought he had quite an interesting life. Not Mike, no wife, no family, living on his own. <laughs> For all his money, I wouldn't say he was exactly blessed with the goodies of life. Well, it all depends on what you do with what you've got, doesn't true, it? True, true. You're right, Stanley. It's not funny, is it? No, it's not funny. My tongue's got the roof of my mouth, went for a pint. Now then. It's my turn, isn't it? As sharp as you like. You see what they are, Oggy? Can you see them? They're called hands. And I've only got one pair. Where's he going now? I don't think you helped the situation, Stanley. Come on, let's go. Patience, patience. Yes? It's me, Mrs Walker. Now, if you've come about the pies, they are just ready. I can't do everything. It's just what I've come about, Mrs Walker. Look, if, if I don't get any help in there, Mrs Walker, there'll be nobody left to eat the flipping pies. I'm, I'm working myself stupid, Mrs Walker. I've got to have some help. Then there's that silly remarks from flipping Ogden in there. All it's... right. All right. Calm down. You want me to come and help you service, that's it? I just can't cope, Mrs Walker. I just can't... Yes. Right. Well, I'll come. Now, that wasn't so very difficult, was it? Just give me two minutes to wash my hands. <sighs> now, that's the last time you change them, right? Yes, mister. Are you coming for your dinner, aren't you? Well, I'll send my stomach through first, shall I? How can I leave the shop? It's not self-service, you know, and even if it was... Who's going to take the money? I know, I know, I only asked. Well, I'll come through when I can. Right, well, I'm starting, because then beef burgers are turning into biscuits. I've just said I'll come through when I can! Oh, come on, Deirdre, if you come in. Oh, if you find that letter, could you bring it over? It could be in the bedroom. Well, I'm on my way to the shop, aren't I? I'm late as it is. Oh, yeah, OK, well, forget it. You managed to get a drink, then? Oh, just about, yeah. Still bedlam in there. Oh, you want to come in here? <laughs> right, see about that. Yeah. Oh, about time and all. Do you know, my tummy thinks my throat's cut. I'm sorry. Are you coming, aren't you? I'm coming! Hi. Hi. I couldn't say much in the pub, you know, because... Well, what is there to say? Well, this is that, like, are you? Excuse me. Go straight to bed. <sighs> Bert, Mrs Walker. Oh, hello, Annie. Uh, was it Bet you were wanting? That's right. Oh, well, I'm afraid she's uh, she's out for the day. I see. I'm not surprised she's got out of the way. She has let me down rather badly. However, thank you. Well done, Robert. She played a blind. Don't tell me. I'll never get to heaven. Are you looking after this gentleman? Not well enough, but I'm living in hope. As a matter of fact, I want a bottle of wine, that uh, dry white one. Uh... Oh, I'm selling a lot of this. Very popular. <laughs> well, a good companion, a bottle of wine, while I'm sitting at home in my lonely bachelor pad with nothing to read but the company books. So if you know of a nice young lady... A nice uh... young lady in your flat? It has been known, Alfred. <laughs> it has been known. See you. Uh, Ow! I'm coming! <laughs> Carol Fletcher came in the shop this afternoon. Who? Oh? Carol Fletcher. You remember her? She got married the same day as us. What about her? She's just had a baby. She's asked me over to have a look at him, actually. I thought I might go over tonight. It's not far. See a baby at night? Well, I only want to peep. Anyway, um, it, it's not that. I, I think Carol's 
lonely. You know, I think she just wants to chat. All right, you go. I'm not going out. Right then. I'll think about it. How much longer do I have to wait? It is not my fault when the bitter is off. But I don't want a bitter. I want a small room. And I want some help from Fred, who is changing the bitter. And there are people before you. Yeah, I couldn't get served at dinner time, so I went down the flying horse. You know the way, then, don't you? Well, you know what they say, don't you? A week's as good as a nod. I'm going to Legion. Good night, Mr. Tattock. Oh, blow you all. That's one out of the way, Stanley. She'll never get through this, look. I'm doing my best, Mr. Ogden. Good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Walker. I came to see you today. Yes, Alf did say you've been looking for me. Do I take it you've come here to work? It's my day off. I've come in for a drink. I see. Oh, you've condescended to put in an appearance, have you? Come on, then, get your clubber off. Go and tickle yourself. I'll flaming tickle you. Now, will you please get bed a gin and tonic and then see to those ladies over there. And you can put your money away. Now, bet. I am appealing to your better nature, which I am sure exists in spite of your attempts to prove otherwise. I am not working with him. You have no need to speak to him, and if you want to kick him as he passes, be my guest. But please, please, help me, if only for tonight. Come on, don't fly an horse with Mr. Duckworth, I'm having a private conversation with Ben. Come on, I'll buy you a drink down there. You'll never get a drink in here. Thanks. But no thanks. Some other time, perhaps. Suit yourself. And you're daft for stopping. Just for tonight. No strings. No strings. Go on, then. But just keep him out of my way. Now, who's next? Oh, uh, do you think we might possibly have a drink, Mrs. Walker? If you're sure you don't want to go somewhere else, what would you like? Uh, uh... Well, I'm not surprised he's forgot. Yeah? Hello? Oh, come on. <clears throat> Hello there. And would Madame like a table by the band? Uh, I was right to come, wasn't I? Yeah, why? Well, all that talk in the shop, I mean, it was an invitation. Well, of course it was. As a matter of fact, I thought I overdid it. I just wasn't sure. Anyway, you don't need an invitation. I do. All right, then you do. Come this way, sit down, and have a drink. You were sure, weren't you, hmm? that I'd come? Two glasses. Unless, of course, the other one's for someone else. No. No, it's for you. What's the matter? I just don't want you to be that sure of me. I, I oh, don't know I why. know, I know, no, 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 no. That was a bald wind trick, wasn't it? I didn't put that other glass down until the bell went. Honest. Well, I thought you'd be impressed. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Oh, now, come on. What's the matter? Relax. You're with friends. Come on. There. That's better. Oh, Elizabeth, good. It's Annie Walker here, dear. Elizabeth, don't you think it was time this silly matter was settled? Yes, I realise that, dear, but if we could only have a talk. Now, I was wondering if you could possibly come in tonight after we've closed, say, about 20 to 11. Do you think you could? It would be helpful. Yes, I know, but we can try it. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you then. Here you are. Shouldn't be too bad. It's not long brewed. Some cold. No, it's not. Get it down, you. Yeah. Was it busy at the Rovers? I don't know. I've got nothing in place. I went to Legion yesterday. Oh, yeah. Still playing silly beggars, are they? More like a loony bit, it is. Where did you go? 
uh, visiting some girlfriend or other. She goes out a lot these days, isn't she? Yeah, well, she works hard, Uncle Al, but very hard. She's entitled to a bit of relaxation. No, I like my beer. Oh, it's fantastic. Well, it's not the sort of uh, Costa del Blackpool, you know. Oh, they've got fabulous beaches, beautiful hotels, great nightlife. I'll have to go again soon. Want to come? Oh, don't. Furthest day ever gets me mother's. Well, I thought you said it was nice, sir. Oh, yeah, it is. Got a letter from her this morning. Keeps saying she wants to see me. And are you going? No. Good. Why? Well, I enjoy these little evenings, don't you? I, uh, I don't think enjoy is quite the right word. It could be. No. Well, why not? I, I don't know why, just not yet. Stop it, will you? <laughs> I'm not doing anything. Here. Oh, no, no more for me. I've had enough. Oh, come on. There's plenty more where this came from. Look, I've, uh, I've got to go, actually. Well, in look, you've only been here five minutes. It's, it's not even half past nine yet. I said I wouldn't be late. Deirdre, what are you frightened of? I'm not frightened of anything. Look, I, I told Ken I was going out for an hour just to yeah, see Yeah, but girlfriend. why did you come here? I came to see you. Yeah, but why? Oh, come on, darling. This is Mike. I, I don't ask for miracles. I know. Um, you can't bear to have me out of your thoughts, right? I'm in them day and night. You can't bear to be away from me and all that rubbish. Well, if, if you want to say that, I, I can stand it. But I don't think you do. I have a pretty good idea why you came here tonight. I'm not dependable. I'm not reliable. You came here to get away from that. Well, if that's the only reason you got tonight, that's OK. But if you can think of a better reason tomorrow, well, well, that's even, even greater. And that's the longest speech I made since I was best man at my father's wedding. I must go. OK. Yeah. Couldn't you think of all that much to talk about then? No, it was, uh, it was very nice. Did she make you some supper? Yeah, I've had a coffee and a piece of cake. Is some Clarbert still out? Oh, he's been in bed for half an hour. He's worn out with all that aggro at the Rovers. Oh. Yeah, like the news? Yeah, OK. Come on, lads, let's have any glasses now, please. Oh, right. Don't speak you, will you? I've got now civil to say. Well, don't say it then. Mrs. Walker, I'm locking up. Ta, lads. Yeah. See ya. Leave it a moment, Fred. I'm expecting someone. And don't you go better on to word with you. Well, it is still my day off, Mrs. Walker, which I have been working. I know precisely what you've been doing, and I'm grateful to you. But I do not intend to remain grateful for the rest of my life. Let her in, it's Elizabeth. Thank you. Want to see me, Mrs. Walker? Yes, I do. Will you all go through? Mm. Shut the door, Fred, and sit down. I hope you're not going to ask us to kiss and make up, Mrs. Walker, because I'm not in the mood. Me neither. Quite honestly, I don't care what you do. I am concerned with this business, my business, this public house. Now, you all saw what happened out there tonight. Customers are leaving because of the atmosphere caused by your stupid squabbles. There's nothing stupid about it, Mrs. As far Walker. as I'm concerned, that is precisely the word for them. Customers are leaving because it is not possible to have a pleasant evening's entertainment there. And I, for one, don't blame them. Can't blame me, Mrs. Walker. I blame you all. And I've called you here tonight to say just this. Either you come in to work tomorrow morning and carry out your duties cheerfully and to the best of your abilities, or you find your way to the nearest job centre. I still have no difficulty in finding people to take your place. And when I say cheerful, I mean cheerful, because I do not intend to listen to another word of bickering. Not one single word. Well, 
Well, I didn't want to cause any trouble, Miss. But I'm not having my private life. That is about. precisely what I was saying. Bet. Well, I won't start anything, Mrs. Walker. And God help anybody who does. Fred. Well, you know me, Mrs. Walker. Anything for a quiet life. Uh, oh. Bet. I'm sorry, Mrs. Walker. Right. It's peace, then. Albeit an uneasy one. Right, I'm ready for bed. Are you staying up? No, I'm coming. Do you want to take a drink up? Um, no, I don't think I'll bother. Ken. What? I, uh, I think I will go and stay at my mum's for a few days after all. Alf can spare me. Why not? He could do with a bit of peace and quiet. Get you away from Uncle Albert. Yeah. It'll get me away from Uncle Albert. Best place to be, you know. I fancy to be arm as myself. Oh, I wouldn't say no to a few days in the sun. I'll tell you what, if the premium bond comes up, I'll whisk you away on my magic carpet. I might just take you up on that. <laughs> you have the fibbing door off it, didn't you, did that, right? Hey, you've not seen Chiyoki about, have you? This morning? Yeah. I haven't even had time for a piece of toast. Why, hasn't he turned into someone? It's, uh, it's not like Chiyoki to say nothing, you know. A lot of it about, you know. What's that? Back trouble. Back trouble? Yeah. Can't get it out of bed. Especially on a morning like this. See ya. Yeah. Come on. Who are you after? Len Fairclough. He's added to get hold of him the flaming tax rebate. You tried the yard? Yeah. That was the yard. What are you looking for, anyway? Have a look at the garage roof. It's leaking. Oh, no. Oh, it's not that bad. Well, not yet it isn't. Things like that have a job of getting worse if they're left. How much is that going to cost? Not a lot if I can get hold of Fairclough. It does me a couple of favours for giving that van of his a kiss alive. And here's me thinking you were being a fool to yourself. What for? That arrangement you had, you keeping his van going in exchange for him helping you out. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> Who's got a clever daddy then, eh? Ah, he knows, don't you, Tiger? Should do. You tell him often enough. Right. Uh, see you later. Yeah, see you. And you, you look after your mum, OK? <laughs> He's a good boy. Maybe you've not got such a clever daddy after all. Eh? Butties. I'll see you. See you. Good day. Go on, then. Go see what you can find. Oh, it's you! I wondered what the heck was going on. Yeah, well, that makes two of us. You haven't seen Chioki about this morning, have you? No, I haven't. Hasn't he turned in? No, he hasn't. Hey, come to think of it, I didn't see him yesterday, neither. Did you? No, you're right. Perhaps he's gone away for a couple of days. Oh, without saying a word. Any old, where's he gonna go? Yeah, I see what you mean. And he wouldn't leave his pigeons neither, would he? Well, I'm wasting my time here. Eddie. What? Which room does he sleep in? That back one up there. The curtains are still drawn. Well, he can't still be in bed. I mean, I'm having him fit to wait. Oh, no. He is in bed.
Chalky, mate. Oh, it's a little bleak flaming house down. Oh, you great steaming nutter. You had us worried sick. Quiet, quiet, can't you? Fell inside my head doing a clog dance. Is he all right? <laughs> well, he's still breathing. What's up with you, then, he rode? Ah, he must be flow or something. Hit me yesterday, it did. I thought if I'd done ten rounds with King Kong. I'd better give the doctor a ring. <laughs> well, no doctor's knocking them out with me. I think you should. <sighs> Couple of days I'll be as right as rain. <laughs> well, you don't sound it. <laughs> You're all right. Hey, is the, uh, is there anything you want? You know, cup of tea? Piece of toast or something? No, my stomach turning cartwheels at thought of it. All right, suit yourself. <laughs> well, if there's nothing I can do, I'd better be getting off to work. Yeah, right. Sarah, any road, love? Yeah, thanks, love. See you later, Eddie. Go by, then. Listen, uh, I'd better be going myself. I'll uh, see you later. Hey, how did you get in any road? Well, it was an emergency, wasn't it? Look, don't worry, I haven't done any damage. You left the door unlocked, you big. What did you break it down for, then? Look, do us a favour, will you? Next time, use the key. There's one on sideboard. Right. Now, are you sure there's nothing you want? A pie and a pint, sorry. Uh, the love of a beautiful woman. Oh, get lost. <laughs> See ya. Here, listen to this. Today will be a day to remember. Make the most of the opportunities that present themselves this evening. My lucky number is four. You reckon I ought to change my bingo night? <laughs> I reckon you want your brain changed if you're taking a notice of that. Oh, I don't know. I think there might be something in it. Oh, not you and all. I'm telling you, what did he say for me yesterday? <laughs> what? It said a new light would come into my life, didn't it? And it was right, wasn't it? Flaming light went in bathroom, yeah. didn't it? Are <laughs> <laughs> you daft, beggar? <laughs> well, don't you laugh, will you? Your face will crack. It's into flipping holiday camp, you know. Some of us have come to work. What do you mean, some of us? Well, in case you haven't noticed, it's gone quarter to. Them machines should be humming by now. And in case you haven't noticed either, it was 25 to when we stopped. Oh. All right. Four minutes and that's that. Hey, it is this flipping sea break, you know. Anyway, I was counting. Baldwin is, isn't it? And if you lot think I'm going to get pushed again, you've got another thing coming. Mm. Nice to know you, mate. Oh, no. no, it shouldn't take me more than about an hour to get this, so I'll see you at what? Half three, how's that suit you? <coughs> OK, then. Right, see you then. Bye. That's that fixed. Morrison's this morning, then I'll nip over and see... Uh, Hargreaves this afternoon. Oh, so you won't be back this afternoon? No, it doesn't look like it. Right. So if you know more problems... None that I can't handle. Oh, there is one more thing. What's that? Could you spend a bit of time in here this afternoon? In this office? Yeah, I might stop their fingers getting idle if they see someone's taking an eye on things. Well, if you think so. I do. Is it all right if I take a couple of minutes extra at lunchtime? Only I said I'd pop over to get something for Mr Tatlock. Well, what's wrong with Deirdre? Oh, she's gone to her mother's for a few days. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what? Deirdre has? Yes, that's right. Just her and Tracy. Ken's not gone. I expect he's too busy. It's all rather sudden, really. Still, I expect she felt she needed a break. Yeah, I expect she did. Mm. I thought you were going to put kettle on. Yes, I was. Sorry, well, I still am on it. Sorry. Well, I was just thinking. Oh, I thought I could hear something groaning and clanking. Sure. Don't, you, don't you ever okay. stop and ask yourself, um, what are we doing here? See you later. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, I'm trying to make a living. Not that. I mean, here we are. At the start of a, a brand new year. Well, we just stuck here doing exactly the same thing that we did last year and the year before that. There's a lot of folk out there who give their right eye to be able to say that. Especially them that have lost their jobs. I know. It's just that... Well, sometimes I just feel life's passing me by somehow. You know what you need, don't you? What? Husband. Well, oh, Rita, I'm serious. So am I. You think you're badly done to now. Wait till you get your husband to chase after from breakfast till bedtime. Oh, what I need is a purpose in life. Right. You can go to wholesalers this afternoon. Oh, Rita, can't you be serious for one single minute about anything? Yes, I can, if I thought it would do any good. For it won't, will it? Cos I know for a fact you'll be stood there this time next year saying the same things. And worse, I'll be listening to you. So, come on, be a good girl and put kettle on. Because the way things are going, that's going to be the only exciting thing that's going to happen round here today. You really know how to cheer a body up, don't you? <laughs> Hello, Bert. Aye, aye. 
Hayek. Do you know, I didn't realise how hard it was to manage with one hand and so now. Oh, is your arm no better? Not really. Doctor says it's going to be a long job, you know, but I never thought it'd be out like this. Oh, well, you can't be too careful, you know. I know that, but it's just this hanging about that gets me down, having now to do, you know, if I could just get back to work like. Well, doctors know best. Hello, is this a family outing? Hello, son. Hello, Dad. Look, uh, I can't stop. I've got my van and double yellows. Uh, Rita. Yes, love. You don't know where your Lenners, do you? Have you tried yard? Yeah, all morning. He's not there. I thought you might know where he's working. No, I don't. He didn't say. But I'm seeing him dinner time, if that's any help. Well, if you see him, tell him I was looking for him. Yes, I will. Sum it up, then. Yeah, the garage. Got phlegm and leak and it's getting worse. Oh. Well, I'll tell him when I see him. Right? It doesn't matter if it's temporary for now. Just as long as he can do summer and quick. Right. You wait. I come here. Thought you might fancy some no, I couldn't. But well, this won't do you any harm. Oh, take it away, can't you? Oh, I'd suit yourself. <laughs> right, that's about ever up and door. Well, shame to waste it, isn't it? How are you feeling today? I think I'll live. It's more than I reckoned on this morning. <laughs> Don't you fancy getting your feet up downstairs in front of that telly? It's warmer than up here, you know. Better off where I am. Suit yourself, I know where I'd sooner be. Well, you don't feel you've kicked it up via car toss and sat on via camel, do you? Yeah, you got a point there. <coughs> you sure you don't fancy none of this? Not now, any road. Might find, so, fancy some of it a bit later on. Yeah, well, I won't be here later on, will I? I'll tell you what, I'll see if I can get someone else to pop in. <coughs> don't bother. Don't so be zaffed. You're not fit enough to look after yourself, are you? Oh, that'll be all right. Yeah, you sound it, and Earl. <coughs> look, I'll tell you what, I'll uh, see if I can get Bet to pop in after she's finished at the Rovers. Oh, well, now, if it were bet, or else, eh? Don't worry, mate. You leave it to your Uncle Eddie. I'll find somebody. Look, he's just not very well, that's all. What's up with him? Well, he's got some sort of flu bug. Well, what are you telling me for? Well, he needs someone to look after him, don't he, till he gets back on his feet again. I don't see what it's got to do with me. Look, he won't thank me for coming round here, neither. But he needs someone. And you happen to be all he's got. Fellas, you're all the same. Shouting the odds from morning till night. But when there's some trouble, you're like big, soft kids, aren't you? Look, are you coming or aren't you? I don't suppose I've much choice, have I? He'll be very grateful. Oh, you say that's all right. What are you looking at? Hey! Oh. Hey, Berkler, what are you doing here? I've come for you, haven't I? I thought you might fancy a bite at the Rovers. You're not turning into a knight in shining armour after all these years, are you? I was just passing, wasn't I? So oh, you come would. In. Come on, then. He said he wouldn't be through till half past one. I finished early, didn't I? Well, I've just sent Mavis for a dinner, haven't I? Oh, in that case, I'll have to find another bird to give a pie and a pint to at the Rovers, won't I? I'll see you later. Hang on a minute. What? Brian Tills is looking for you. What does he want? Uh, something about a leaky roof at Garage and it's urgent. I said I'd tell you if I saw you, so I've told you. Yes, you've told me. See you later, then, eh? Is that you, Bet? 
No, it's me. You? What the hell are you doing here? I'm here on an errand of mercy, aren't I? The Lord knows why, the way you treated me. Eddie Flaming Yates, I'll skin him. What's he trying to do, finish me off? Now, don't get excited. It won't do you any good. <coughs> that mate of yours was right. You're not in a fit state. Look after yourself. Yeah, I don't right. know why you've only got flu living in this tip. I'll be all right. You will now, I'm here. I don't need you. You need someone, that's for sure. And who else have you? Eh? Exactly. Whether you like it or not, Tom Whiteley, you're stuck with me. Now, I want a spoon and a clean glass, and not the one you take your teeth out and put in. The bathroom. Mm -hmm. What do you want it for? Hey. First thing I'm going to do is give you a good dose of this. What is it? Hey, it's an old family remedy. My mother swore by it. First sign of a cold, she'd get this down my dad like grease lightning. Hey, hang on. Your dad died when we were 33. Bathroom, you said. I mean, look at us. Ten days into the new year. And what have we got to show for it, eh? A big fat nothing. If you don't get a move on, Vida, you'll have that machine rusting up. I were only talking, weren't I? Were you? Well, for your information, you talk with your mouth, not with your hands. Do you know, I don't know why you don't chain us to these machines. You could stand over us with a big whip. You'd enjoy that. Hey, don't hear any more ideas. I'm only doing my job, aren't I? Well, so at flipping stormtroopers. Look, I've nearly been put on door once because of this lot. I'm not risking it again. If you don't like it, you can do other. Uh, there's a call for you, Vera. If, if you want me, I'll be in my own office for a while. Oh, all right, Emily. Yes, sir, no, sir. Three bags full, sir. I'm warning you, Vera. Where are you frightened? You don't shatter your wire. Look, do us a favour, will you? Belt up and be sharp on that phone and all while you're at it. Hello? Hiya, kid. How are you? Uh, just hang on, Chuck. It's personal. Vera? Hiya, love. What can I do for you? <laughs> you must be joking. Listen, if Baldwin gets his hands on you, he'll have you as a floor cloth. Oh, not all the time, no. Well, I suppose dinner's as good a time as any. Go on, then. Hey, but be careful. See ya. <coughs> oh, well, it obviously wasn't bad news by the look of it. I hate you're not going to believe all that one. Clint Eastwood. Sammy. Sammy Eastwood? No, Sammy out the market. Not him that we're flogging the man bags for you. Yeah, he's got this idea to put what to us. What did he want? Well, uh, you know, he just wants to talk, that's all. Mm, not again. Yeah. yeah. But he's got a flaming cheek, hasn't he? Yeah, I... but he only wants to talk. Oh, and I take it you told him what to do and all. Yeah, I did. He's coming to see us tomorrow dinner. Oh, no. Not been any more of that. Flaming horse liniment, that is. You'll do as you're told. It'll have you on your feet like lightning. Yeah, you take top off that bottle, I've got my feet, all right. Straight through that flaming door. Oh, no, you won't. Adios. Here, are you going to get this down here? Do you want them to see what a big baby you are? You got a woman in there? No, it's Phyllis. He's sitting up, he'll be jogging down the block after tea. <laughs> oh, no, he won't. You do look a bit better than he did this morning, though. Well, he's a tough old boot, Yorkie. You've got to be, haven't you? Hey, then for anyone we know. Well, they were uh, they were for this invalid, you know, but as he's much better, I don't think I'll bother, you know. Oh, go on then, here. Yeah. <laughs> the I'll, hell are you doing? I'll look after these until you start eating. Now, look what you've done. If you'd have brought it out of it first, claiming You'd place. have been a pretty picker by now, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's as maybe. How's it gone today? Couldn't have gone better. Ask me who the new driver is. Yeah, heck, you didn't waste much time, did you? Well, that makes a nice change from humping them sacks. Got it made, them drivers, you know. Just keep your nose clean. Remember, we've got bin wagon at year coming up. So you worry. I'll treat that bin wagon like I treat a woman. I'm not sure how to take that. Well, you know what I mean. I do. He's been treating me like a bin wagon for the last 20 years. <laughs> oh, Hello. All we need is your daddy, isn't it? Darling. 
You know, very soon you're going to be too big for that Down. playpen. You are. You're going to be into everything, aren't you? Ooh. What am I going to give you ideas for, eh? You'll learn soon hey, enough. Yes. <laughs> See, Daddy. Say, Daddy. Daddy. Where's Daddy? Daddy? Clever boy. Hello, love. Hi. Hey, there's two of us, you know. Hello, Tiger. Yeah, you can play with it while I get your tea. Yeah, in a minute, love. I've got to make a phone call first. OK. Anything the matter? Yes, Fairclough. Yeah, What's he done? <sighs> Nothing. It's a trouble. He's not been near the flaming place. Did he say he'd come? Well, I've not seen him, have I? The reader said she'd tell him at dinner time. Mommy. Go on. Your tea will wait five yeah. minutes. Thanks, love. Come on, then. Oh, I'm hoping I'll find you here. You have? What, what are you doing here? I'm looking for a big, strong fellow who will carry me shopping home. Give us five minutes, will you? Did I say someone? I'll get it. Sir. By the field 8329. Yeah, it is. Oh, hello, Ryan. Lens, who's here? Of course I gave him your message. And to be known. Hang on, I'll get him for you. Len, for you. Who is it? Brian Tilsley. Tell him I'm not here. I've just told him you are. What's the matter? Just leave it, eh? Yeah. No, oh, at last. You know something, Len? You're harder to get hold of than a grease ferret. Did we to give you the message? By the garage roof. Well, I was hoping you'd have been on this after. Uh, I was waiting in for you. Well, I know you got work to do. So have I. I won't have much longer if I don't get that roof fixed. It's urgent, Len. Yeah. Like your van was urgent when you wanted me to fix it for you. Or have you conveniently forgotten about that? Now, hang on a minute. We've got a deal, remember? So if you can't fix it tomorrow, when can you fix it? Look, I've told you, I'm not doing that job tomorrow, or the day after, or the day after that. You'll have to get somebody else then, won't you? Now, is that clear? Or shall I draw you a picture? What's all that about? I said leave it, didn't I? You can't do that. It's a lot of work on your van, and you have this agreement. Not no more, we haven't. As far as Brian Tilsley and his garage is concerned, being in rot. I wish they got they'd done it three months ago. Oh, so that's it. Sharon, isn't he? You still think he's responsible for what happened, don't you? All this because of her. It is, isn't it? He said you wanted to lift home. Yeah. Come on, then. He won't flame and do it. He won't do it. Why not? I don't know why. But we think he's going to get away with it. He's got another thing coming. Hey, is it music cold in here? It is a bit nippy, you know. Well, I'm warm enough. Well, you'll be warm in the fridge, won't you, either? Stout folk can stand cold, you know. Listen, I'm not trying to walk over a great old duckworth. Oh. Girls, girls, we haven't started work yet and you're arguing. Now give it a rest. Belt up, eh, Vera? Well, it's her. She's always on about my figure. Well, there's lots to go on about, isn't there? Oh, Vera. Hey, I wonder what Sammy wants to see us about. Well, perhaps he's opening a new factory in Pakistan and he wants us to go and work there, all of us. Ha <laughs> ha! Did you find us all husbands? The door over there, you know. That'd be smashing, wouldn't it? What do you say, Ida, eh? Oh, eh? Oh, come on, Ida. Give us a smile. Come on, for God's sake. Well, I suppose I could do with a new husband, about 25, sir. <laughs> That's a bit old, isn't it? Well, 24, then. <laughs> hey, up, hey, up, management. Talking about Sammy, were we? Well, you can forget him. You made your last hand begging here, and that's a fact. And don't you go making any rude gestures behind my back, Vera. I never did, did I? No, but you were thinking of doing. <sighs> you know, Pakistan is not far enough to get away from that one. Oh, when do you start your new job, Ivy, as a guard dog? Get cracking, Vera. <laughs> You wouldn't fair to think Leonard bear a grudge like that, would you? Aye, does take some credit in. I'm a grown fella. 
That's when it's a grudge over nothing. I thought that business was finished with. At least I hoped it was. Me too. Look, maybe we're wrong. Maybe it's just the way he was feeling, you know. Something gone wrong at work. I'll see him today, he'll be as nice as pie. You are going to see him then? Definitely. Look, we made a deal. I keep his van straight, he says my garage doesn't fall down. I've kept my side of the bargain. He's gonna keep his. If he's gonna cause a row, rake up all that Sharon business. There's again. nothing to rake up, Gail. I know, but Len thinks there is. Well, then he's gotta be put straight. Hasn't he? Right. I'll see you later, all right? See ya. Hey, I don't know. That funny world I've brought you into. Yes. Like it can't function yes. without trouble. Yes. Well, that. There you are. One quarter of Pontefract cakes. Now, are you going to pay for them? Or are you going to exercise your right as the big white chief and call it a perk? Are you taking the mickey? Would I ever. Thank you. Len, let bygones be bygones, eh? We don't want any more bother. I mean, there were enough trouble on 8 o'clock news to satisfy even a greedy man. I don't want any bother. I wonder. I can't understand you. I don't see why not. I'm the loveliest, most honest person in the entire world. Mind you, I don't have a lot of competition. No, but I mean, you obviously don't want Len and Brian falling out, no? Opening old wounds. Not to mention setting a lot of tongues clacking like turnstiles. Oh, well, why don't you uh, persuade Len a bit, appeal to his better nature, his common sense even, instead of rubbing him up the wrong way by being sarky like you were just then. You did right, I should. I should butter him up to get me own way, when really all I want to do is knock his silly block off. Oh, you know, you double your troubles, you do, by being so aggressive all the time. They men don't like aggressive women. How come they've all given you the go by then? And you can be very cruel as well. Mavis, I'm sorry. Are you decent, Tom Whiteley? Oh, you're not dead. Pity. Fancied this beating myself. I was just asleep then, you know. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. I hardly slept a wink last night. <coughs> One minute I was sweating, next minute I was freezing. Oh, don't like the sound of that. Hey, what do you mean? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? There's somewhat inside you fighting. One germ making you hot, another germ trying to make you cold. It's to be up last one, doesn't win, isn't it? Thanks for being so cheerful. Here, get this down you. I don't like beef tea. You don't have to like it, just get it down you. Hey, my mother used to keep my dad and his horse going all through winter on beef tea. I'm not a flaming horse. Oh, how long have you had these? A couple of years, why? They make you look like a convict. Look, why don't you buzz off? I'm not leaving here till you've drank all that beef tea every last drop. Hey, I was nearly a nurse once. All right, what stopped you? Medical profession. You won't upset me. I'll get you better if it kills you. Yeah, I believe you. Stand by a bed, Sammy's here. Oh, look who's there. Hey. <laughs> Hello, Sammy. Hello, Ida, Vera. Actually, what I'd come for, I'm uh, looking for volunteers. For me, uh, Harry. Yeah, oh. we could put my name down for Hey, I'm mine. <laughs> uh, hey, oh. oh, she should be on a chalk chain. Oh, trouble? Uh, nothing we can't handle, love. Excuse me, uh, you any business on these premises? Cos if you haven't, you're trespassing. He's a friend of ours. He's come to see us. Yes, right. Don't worry, love. I have this trouble with all the ladies. They won't leave me alone. Oh, <laughs> really? I must be exception then. On your way out. Uh, just a minute, Ivy. It's gone half past twelve, so he's not even on the firm's time. Yeah. Good point. You don't even know what he's come for, anyway. I can guess. Well, what have you come for? I've come to make 1983 a golden year. That's what I've come for. I've come to make wealthy women of you ladies. What did I say? Come on, Sammy. The denim handbags you made for me, they were the berries on the Ollie this Christmas. Oh, they oh. sold like hotcakes. There were queues round the stalls to buy them. Six women fought to death to get the last one. You've come to give us a bonus, then? That's kind uh, of you. Well, I only wish I could, Vera, but overheads, they're a knife in the back of business. Overheads? All the overheads you've got up market is a mug to brew your tea in. <laughs> Who is she? 
Well, for your information, I happen to be supervisor around here. Not in dinner hour, you know, Ivor. Come on, Sammy, get to the point. Well, I want more, don't I? I want more handbags. A oh, hundred a week, at least. Do you know, I've even had inquiries from the palace, the Queen herself. A hundred a week? If we did that, we'd be doing now but make handbags. Oh, yes, you would, Elsie. You'd be signing on dough. You know as well as I do, if Mike Baldwin sees as much as one handbag round here, we'll all be down road. And if you remember, I've been down that way already. Now you, whatever your name is, out. Sammy. Sammy Patel. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's what I always say. Why don't we at least discuss it? I'll fetch, please. What do you say, ladies? Well, we could if she'd cover for us. No way, Vera. Sorry, Sammy. I'm very disappointed in you. Where's your spirit of adventure, eh? Still, if that's your decision, if you don't need the money, well, I'll have to go elsewhere. Or maybe even on Kong. Bad. Cheerio, ladies. I'm a very disappointed man. Hey, hey, no, Sammy, just a minute. Yeah. Um, if we did do this job for you, how much would you make a, a piece like each? Oh, uh, one hundred a week. <gasps> Give or take a few quid. Tax free. Oh. Think about it. Ta da! Yeah. Hundred quid a week. Oh, it's a lot of money, kid. You're not kidding. Hey, what do you think, Ivy? Put a lot of dumplings on your broth, you know. Mm. Oh, I just wondered if you fancied a bite of lunch at this new place, the Danish Pastry. Oh, yes, I've heard it's very good. So have I. Oh, well, aren't you working today? Well, I'm in this afternoon to do the wages and keep an eye on things. Mr Baldwin likes me to do that when he's away. I see you're his uh, right-hand woman, are you? Well, if he delegates, it does tend to be to me. He'll be sitting behind a desk in a big black suit next to oh. <laughs> Hello, Emma. Hello. OK, at least I'm just going for my lunch. You don't mind, do you? No, Mavis, certainly Mavis. Anything you say, Mavis. Do mm. I detect an atmosphere? Well, I shouted at her this morning. And she's sulking, mm. as only babies can sulk. She sulks with her face, her eyes, her mouth. Even her feet, I shouldn't wonder. I bet if you could see her big toes, they'd both be sullen like that. <laughs> right, I'll be back at one. Uh, no push, no push. Bye, Mavis. Bye, Bye Emily. Oh, hello. I've half been expecting you, love. I thought you might have phoned. What's got into Len? No idea. He's certainly upset Brian. Has he? I presume it's a hangover from that Sharon business. Well, you have to try and understand, Gail. He thinks if she hadn't been potty about your Brian, she'd still be here with us. So, he liked her and he misses her. Nothing to do with Brian. I know that. And so does Len, deep down. He's just having a bit of a brood. Not uncommon in my circle. He'll snap out of it and he'll be as right as rain. Len. I've got a phone call to make. Looks like you've been busy. Lip trot's roof. Somebody nicked all the lead off it last night. It's not nice. Not when he's standing underneath when it's raining in on you. Well, I've got the same problem myself. Down at the garage. Is that right? I know you must be busy, Len. Well, it's obvious. Still, like to say, hooks brass. But if you can see where to pop them around in the next couple of days, uh, I'd appreciate it. Sorry. Are you saying you've not got time? What I'm saying is I'm never going to do the flaming job. That's what I'm saying. We've got a deal, then. I fixed your van, now you fixed my premises. We had a deal. Not anymore. Are you never going to let it drop? No, so up it! <sighs> Two can play that flaming game. <laughs> Hundred quid a week. What well, I could do, my share of that. Mm. I might even have managed a carpet for a front room this year instead of next year. I'd have chucked everything out of my wardrobe and started afresh. I'm sick of my clothes. Oh, I wish you'd all shut up and stop talking and torturing yourself. And me and all. Cos I could have done with the money and all, you know. Oh, not on your upper, surely, Elsa. Hundred quid don't drain. Oh, shut up, Vera. Hello, everybody. Dined well, have we? Oh. Can't wait to make light of the afternoon's toil. You do know what day it is, don't you? It's payday. Yes, well, I'll see you all later. 
Hey, hey. I might even have managed to have bathroom done up and all. Oh. Just cut your losses, Brian. Get someone else to mend the roof. I nearly went for it. I did. I nearly thumped him. You're not listening to me, are you? If Len wants to play silly beggars, let him. But don't you get involved. I'm right, aren't I? No. You're as stubborn as he is. Look, he's wrong, Gail, about everything. Yeah, but if he won't do it, Brian, that's it, isn't he? You can't make him do it, so it's best just to forget about it. <sighs> Look, he's taking it out of me for something I've never done. It's like talking to a wall. It's like you're saying I'm a thief, but I'm not. It's just the same. I'm not getting through to you, am I? It's not worth the hassle. He isn't. Please, Brian. Len come to say he's sorry, do you think? Oh, doesn't know what the word means. Do you? Hello, love. Oh. Hello, son. You don't mind me calling in, do you? I couldn't think of anything else to do this afternoon. So as a last resort, you came round here? Thank you very much. No, you know what I mean. It's just that, well, if I could just get back to work, you know. Look, uh, I'm off. I'll, I'll see you later, Dad. All right, try some. See you, love. Remember what I said, eh? Not been behaving himself, has he? Your Brian always behaves himself. Who are you kidding? I thought it was only women that bore grudges. Not fellas. Listen, there's two fellas at our place. They haven't spoke to each other for 20 years and they work next door to one another and all. One of them were a black leg in the strike or something. And then there's your wars, isn't they? Between kings and that, they're usually just grudges. Hey, he's not got a grudge against you, has he? No. Just some fella at work. Much better. Mm -hmm. I knew, in fact, don't you think, Marion? Oh, yeah, definitely. A lot better. I feel rotten. Hey, anybody asked about me at work? Uh, Nobody has, have they? They couldn't care less, could they? You'll have to threaten them to send me a wreath. Oh, you're not that bad, Sharky. You don't know half of it. Oh, I nearly forgot. I bought you some grapes. I don't like grapes. Pips get under my teeth. I'll leave them there just in case. Lee. Are you still driving the same my place? Eh, uh, yeah, I am, yeah. Yeah. Bet you hope I don't come back, don't you? Get jopped permanently then, can't you? Dead man's shoes. I'll oh, give over, Chucky. Hey, I'm back. Oh, bolt the door, bar it. Don't let her in. She'll finish me off, she will, honest. She'll kill me, she'll finish I me off. Don't you know the little sweet? Don't go for a minute. <laughs> God, don't leave back me to work, with her. Look, uh, oh. I've got to be going and all, Chucky. God, have you no compassion? Oh, hello, I didn't know you'd come, he looks a lot better, doesn't he? Yeah, I was just saying that, ah, yeah. Ah, well, he's being properly looked after. Guess what I've got for your dinner? I don't think. Onions chopped in butter with plenty of pepper and salt. Don't like onions. Of course you do. Fellas, when they're old, they're like children, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, keep your pecking up, eh, Chucky? <laughs> That's the ticket. Bye-bye, Mrs. Pierce. Bye-bye, love. Don't worry, he's in good hands. Well, get cracking. Or do you want me to feed you? Oh, grapes. Can I have one? I suppose you'll like grapes. Aye. They're my favourite fruit. Uh, hang on a minute, kid. Well, she's not in her office, but she won't have gone far. I'll be in and out like a burglar. Right. Right, shut off, lasses. Uh, Sammy's got another proposition to put to us. Are you tired of living, Sammy? Because if Nonsense. I find that... Not a hundred quid a week, not one twenty-five. One fifty! <gasps> oh, I wish you'd give other, Sammy. Listen, I've got me profit to the bone. <laughs> me clavicle, as a matter of fact. But the computer says it's possible. Yeah. So what do you say? Uh, well, right, you buzz off. And we'll let you know. Hey, oh, right. Red leader back to base. 150, and I'll open a Swiss bank account for you if you like. <laughs> oh, hey, you. What are you doing here again? Uh, you'll never believe this. <laughs> I thought it was Woolies. <laughs> oh, uh, next time you want a card, dear love, Sammy's the name. All right. Ta da. Who's he? Uh, oh, he's a friend of Vera's. Really? Hi, dear. I'd like to see you in the office, please. Shut the door. Have you not got the sense you were born with? 
Well, if you mean in Sammy, he'd come on his own. We didn't invite him. Oh, and what did he want? Well, he offered us more money. And? Well, that's it, more money. Baldwin will go mad. He oh. will. He'll go crackers. It's a lot of money. Oh. Good wages, ladies. Can I have your monikers, please? So. Thank you. Uh, for no hotels? No. Nothing wrong, is there? Oh, no, no, Emma. Oh, good. It's nice to report all quiet on the Western Front when we've been left holding the fort. Don't you think? Uh, yes. Yes. Rita, it's Gail. Have you seen Len this afternoon? Do you know where he's working? No, nothing that I know of. It's just a feeling I've got. Brian's not in the garage and that's unusual. And you think he might have gone looking for Len? Is that what you think? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll nip round at Yard and see if your Brian's there. And don't worry, love. They're all talk. Both of them. I'm just nipping out for a minute. Well, why, if they're all talk? Well, fellas have a habit of running out of conversation very quick, like, don't they? I don't go making it worse throwing your weight about like you usually do. Well, thank you for that vote of confidence. Here we are. Well, I am. Nick is next door but one love playing with his mates. Football, so I said I'd call back in half an hour. Yeah, that's all right. Look, Bert, do you mind if I nip into town for an hour? Something's cropped up. An errand I want to do. do no, mind? of course not. Off you go, love. Hey! Just what do you think you're doing? Now, that's not easy, and that, is it, kid? I mean, you could be doing out, couldn't you? Catching a bus, riding a bike. I want talking to you, and them don't look much like a pair of jeans to me. Well, I should hope not. I'd look well, wouldn't I, with a pair of jeans stuck up to my front bedroom window, <laughs> wouldn't I? What do you think you're on, Elsie? Oh, well, I mean, just a pair of flaming curtains, that's all. She's not nicking out, it's her own material. But it's Mr Baldwin's machine, and it's his cotton, and it's his time. Oh. Well, it's never bothered before, has it? No, but that was before you lot started playing Father Christmas with them handbags, wasn't it? Pack it in, will you? If that's the way you want it. Yes, it is. Right. Happy now? Finished. Right. And don't let me catch anybody else doing it, either. Oh, if she's going to carry on like this, it's going to be a proper little fun palace round here, isn't it? She reminds me of Hitler in knickers. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that one, Hello, Brian. What are you doing here? I'm waiting for Len. Is he not in the office? For years he's locked himself in. Well, what do you want with Len? I mean, is it anything that... You know. I'm on your side, Brian. Are you? He's gone back on an agreement, yeah, don't he? So true, he has. Well, I'm sure he'll come to his senses in eventually. I've given him every chance. Well, it's like I told Gail. He misses Sharon, and anything that sort of reminds him of it tends to make him a bit ratty. There's no need to get ratty with me. Well, you were involved in her leaving, no matter how innocent you might have been. I was not involved. Oh, come on. I know she did most of the chasing, but you could have legged her up sooner than you did. A lot sooner. I did nothing wrong. All right. But as a favour to me, just let things cool for a couple of days. Back off. Me back off? Well, why don't he back off? He's the one telling me to get stuffed, you know. It's not to the way round. I've done a lot of work in this van. A full day's service, new parts. Over 80 quid, it says here. What's that? It's his bill. What I want paying. Oh, look, keep it for a couple of days, please. No. Well, you're just being stupid now, Brian. Well, that makes two of us. What's going on? Nothing. Brian, we're just leaving, weren't you, love? Yeah. I brought you this. What is it? It's plain enough. It's what you owe me. And I want it paying. That is what you can do with your flaming bill. Now on your way, sonny boy. I said I want it paying. Take your hand off me. When you paid me. Oh, now, come on. Stop Take it. Take your hand off me! Stop, Stop it! You're behaving like animals. Before you do something, you'll be sorry. I want what me money. Oh, come on. He owes me 80 it's quid. It's not worth belting him for. Then belt me. You've got to be joking. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Is she some kind of a comic? I could have murdered him. Could you, Len? Could you? He looks like a strong lad to me. 
Oh, oh, come on. Down. Well, night. Night, 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 Hey, look at it this way. Money ain't everything, is it? Hmm. No. It's ninety percent of everything, though. Yeah. You ask a millionaire why he's laughing like a drain. He won't say it's because he's down to his last tea bag. I know, but hundred and fifty quid's a lot of money. Oh, if I hear anybody say that again. Well, she's right. It is a lot of money. I know she's right, Vera, and I know it's a lot of money. Well, I think we're entitled to it. So do I. Elsa? Yeah. Why not? Do you mean that I can tell Sammy we'll make his handbags for him? And be angry, Baldwin. That's if he doesn't hang us first. <laughs> All together. We're, we're in the money. <laughs> we're in the money. <laughs> hey, I can't wait to get stuck into them handbags, kid. When shall we make some? In his dinner hour, when we're finished tonight. Hey, and if Baldwin don't come back today, we could make a few, we'll have his backs turned. Right, well, we're going to make a start, then. Do you think it's a good idea, Vera? Of course it is. We'll make us fortunes. It's a bit risky after what happened last time. Well, you've changed your tunes since last night, haven't you? Nida's right. It is too risky. All of the fire is no danger. Yeah, but look at money we'll make, eh? 150 quid a week between six of us. That's an extra... 25 quid? Yeah. Eight in a sound, no taps. We'll be capitalistics. Ah, and if we get fired, we'll be paupers. Yeah, too right. Yeah, but at least then we're in time to make a few handbags out of scraps. Cos that's all we'll be doing, you know. Mind you, if you're yellow. Don't you call me yellow. No, no, me neither. Well, what colour do you suggest, eh? White, the colour you go every time Baldwin looks hey, at you. Hey, less of that. We don't want any of that. Well, well I mean, okay. look so about shop steward, Listen, you. Listen, I'm not supposed to take that from you, so well, you're built up. Hey, you are. Hey, you're hey, 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 hey. What's going off? No. Well? No. No, it don't look like it, neither. Shouldn't you be making a start me now? Elsa, can I have a word with you? Yeah. What was that lot all about? Oh, you know, then they've gone out of bed there alongside the pair of them. They weren't arguing by about making handbags of any chance, were they? Oh, no. Because I'm not daft, you know, I'll say. No. I mean, it's a lot of money that handbag Sammy's been offering then. Yeah, well, you've nothing to worry about. You would tell me, wouldn't you, if I had? Yeah, yeah, of course I would. Well, uh, is that it then? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll get back to work. Ah, oh, home at last. I think your mum's getting a bit old for travelling, love. I'm exhausted. Hi. Oh, hello. I wonder when you're coming back. I rang Ken last night, didn't he tell you? He said no. He lives in the world of his own, that chap. Oh, you've noticed as well, have you? He's always been the same. Well, did you have a nice time with your granny? Your mum's been spoiling oh. and rotten, as usual. Well... I'm glad to see somebody's been doing a bit of housework anyway. Well, you're looking at him, you know. I've the most of cooking them all. You're a little treasure. What are you? <laughs> That'll be Bulldog Drummond. You two haven't been having a tiff, have you? Oh, I told you he's done note. That chair's more company than what he is. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I've said you were back. Why did you tell me they were coming back? Oh, didn't I? I thought I had. Hello, Tracy. How are you? I got a new dog. Oh, have you now? It's in the carrier bag. You can show it to him if you like. I'm gasping for a cup. Right. Hey, you said that to Uncle Albert. Well, let me look at the other one. Glad to see me. And the rest. I'm glad to be back. Hey, what have you been doing with Uncle Albert? Just like old times, talking about cat and dog. Do you have a nice time? Yes. Smashing. You know me, Mum, though. She always finds something to worry about. Well, that's what mums are for, isn't it? Worrying about their offspring. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. How are you, then? Uh, apart from Uncle Albert. Fine, fine. Um, matter of fact, I've uh, applied for a new job. You've never. What? Only Deputy Director of Social Services. Well, get you. Where? Oh, here. I wouldn't have to move. A deputy Director of Social Services, eh? Oh, I do hope you get it, love. Hey, what's all this about a pantomime? Oh, I told you to keep quiet about that, at least till after we don't pass. She's seen the posters for Aladdin and she wants to go. Well, I wouldn't buy one to a panto. Why don't we all go? Why don't we? Yeah. Oh, damn and black.
Hello? Hello, Elsie? Hi. Oh, I thought I was having a visitation for a minute. I'm poorly. I know. Glenn told me. Is there all you need? A drop of milk if you got it spare. Hang on. Hang on. I said I'll have a look. Bye, you're lucky. I'd overstocked. Oh, Charlie, you're a bobby dazzler. Say, it's like a steam room in here. Well, I'm trying to sweat it out, aren't I? Me cold. Yeah, we want to try opening the window, otherwise the germs will think they're on holiday. Well, who cares, eh? Who gives a damn, Elsie? Oh, oh, I see. Is he feeling neglected then? Old and ill. Nobody cares. Who wants to be lumbered with an invalid, eh? Mrs. Pierce was looking after you. Her? She just comes down to put the boot in. What well, she said to me yesterday, eh? Where would you like to be buried when you die, eh? <laughs> I've all them from getting exasperated. <laughs> Get over, Chalky. Next week you'll be chatting me up. Nah. Always comes sudden when it comes in our family. Oh, dear. We are down, aren't we? Look. I've got some bangers on. Suppose I put some beans and an egg with them and I fetch them through. How will that suit? Oh, I won't be grateful, Elsie. Oh, all right, you hang on there. I'll be as quick as right. I can. I haven't had a decent meal for a week. You didn't find another woman in store when you got home, then? No, just a few blonde hairs on the pillow, that's all. You are? <laughs> That'll be the day. Now then, what did I come in for? Oh, yes, peas. Oh, now, there's a bottom I don't think I recognise. I should hope not. Oh, it's you. Been away, have you? My mum's. Well, you can't get in much trouble there, can you? None at all. Uh, Al, can I put these on my bill, please? Look. Yes, certainly. <coughs> oh, hey, you can't spare me a couple of hours this afternoon, can you? I'm rushed off my feet. All right, then. But I uh, can't stop long. We're, uh, we're all going to the panto. Oh. See ya. Trot. <coughs> See ya. Yeah, I missed that lass. Did you? Well, she does something for the shop, you know. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, a packet of cigars, please, sir. Hey, where were you rushing off to yesterday by yourself? Right. Oh, I was in Manchester all day. Why, did you miss me too, did you? No, but I always know when you're off because your staff find good excuses for coming in here. Do they? I'll have to have a word with them. Hey, don't say anything. They're very good customers. Yeah, because I pay them to work. Hey, listen, are you doing a bit of business with Handbag Sammy down the market, then? Why'd you ask? Well, I saw him going to your place yesterday. Is that right? Well, I saw him a couple of times, actually. A couple of times? Fancy. Yes, he's uh, a business acquaintance, uh, but more of the girls than mine. That Phyllis. I'm not joking, else it blight of my life she is. Put a tash on her, she'll be a dead ringer for Hitler. Hey, <laughs> I think her heart's in the right place, though. Uh, I know, but she, you know, she sort of smothers you. God knows what her husband went through. Pale, thin little fella he was. I always had to start looking his eyes. <laughs> Stay never mind, Phyllis. How are you, love? Ah, uh, me, I'm fine. Aye. Uh, pity, though, isn't it? What is? Well, fine looking woman like you on her own. I, uh, I've got Marion living with me, you know. Aye, I know, but, uh, you know, you're on your own, like, you know, in, in, in that sense. In what sense? Well, you know, uh, like I am. Oh, I see. Well, to that bed, Tom White. Well, I brought you dinner. Oh, you're up already. Wrong again. First time you've been up of a morning for a week. What's that you're eating? Does it look like it's my dinner? Oh, made it yourself. Wonders never cease. As a matter of fact, I made it for him. Oh, really? I wouldn't have thought cooking would have been one of your strong points. Oh, well, what would you say was my strong point? Well, dolled up like that. You wouldn't be going round selling firewood, would you? What did you say, Chalky? About a little tash? Mm, I know exactly what you mean. Give us a knock if you want anything, love. Yeah. And thanks very much, Elsie, love. <coughs> Elsie, love. You want to watch her? She's a manny to you, know. Yeah. I wouldn't mind being a supper now and again, and that's a fact. You what? No. I heard you. You like all rest up fellas, aren't you, Tom Whiteley? 
You've got the dirty inclinations, but not the stamina. How's Chalky doing then? Oh, he's improving slowly, I think. You don't want him uh, rushing it, do you? Getting back to work, I mean. Of course I do. Come off it. You like driving that bin lorry. I've seen you sitting there, big smile on your chops. I bet that's what you wanted to be, weren't it, when you were a little lad, a bin lorry driver? Well, I must admit, it does give you a different aspect on the operation, you know, sitting up there in the cab, watching the lads rushing in and out, filling her up, you know, manoeuvring here and manoeuvring there, like uh, King of the Road, you know. King of the Muck Heap, more like. Shut up, Fred. Well, come on, yeah, it's going on as if you're a chauffeur. You, all you do is drive a muck cart. You've not exactly risen to the height of your profession, have you, Fred? I don't cart rubbish. You talk a lot of it, though. I hear a lot, and all you want to grow up, you, Yates. Why don't you go and boil your head, Fred? Okay. Make some wood glue. Taking a notice of him, Eddie, he's suffering from the after effects of eight pints of bitter and a prawn vindaloo. What are you grinning at? I think I've just been propositioned by Chalky. <laughs> Things are looking up. Chicken monkey. Still, I think Phyllis will put him right. She's a right old battle axe, that one, isn't she? Yeah, no, well, you've got to laugh. I mean, she doesn't believe in covering anything up, does she? 83. Tell. May I say you're looking very rosy in May? What's up with everybody today? With your lucky day. I hope not. Cheers. Cheers, love. What's this I've been hearing about uh, you and Gail's Brian? What she told you. I heard you had a dust up, that's all. I nearly put one on him. He was asking for it, wasn't he? Jumped up, little nothing, coming round the yard, shouting the odds about the flipping leaking roof. Just as if now would. As if now to what? You heard about uh, him and Sharon, didn't you? I heard about Sharon. I didn't hear about him. You've only heard Gail's side of the story, then, haven't you? He led her on. I don't give a damn what anybody says. He led her on. So I said, stuck your roof. Then he starts shouting the odds about some money I owed him for a bit of a job he did on the van. So I nearly clobbered him, didn't I? Oh, I, and what stopped you? Well, I managed to stop myself just in the nick of time. Mm, I see. That's Fairclough's side of the story, is it? Oh, Right, lasses, what are you having? Oh! You're not buying me a drink, are you, Vera? I don't hold a grudge either, even if I still think you're... What? Wrong. What's going off? Oh, excuse me. Oh, hello, Mr. Waldwick. You're just in time to buy us a drink. Well, before you settle down to a nice, heavy lunch, I want to see you at one o'clock on the dot. Right? And Emily, make sure you have the P45s handy, will you? P45s? You're not all leaving, are you? What have you flaming been doing, you two? We've done no, it's honest. Hi, Beth. For the umpteenth time, we've done no wrong. No. no, we talked about it, but we decided against it. I didn't decide against it. I were all for making them handbags. I wish we had a done now, seeing as we're going to get fired. For he's like that bold, we didn't say. He's like Gestapo. He fires you now for even thinking he'd done something wrong. I wish you'd shut up, Vera. He's not going to fire anybody. That's not if you lot's been telling me truth. Now, well, we'll soon see. Right. I'll give it you short and sweet. Sammy Patel was here yesterday. You're back on the handbag lock again, so you're all fired. Pick up a week's money or whatever down to you and on your bike. Hold on a minute, Mr Baldwin. Yeah, give us a chance to say something. I will give you exactly ten seconds. Sammy Patel was here yesterday. Yes, he was. And I sent him packing with a flea in his ear. You may have done, but did they? And if they didn't, you are just as guilty by default. We did, honest, Mr. Baldwin. We did! Oh, yeah? And what about you, Vera? Yeah, we did. Well, I don't believe you. I mean, why would Sammy bother to come here? Because you invited him. Goodbye. It has not been nice knowing you. Look, we did send him packing. And do you know what it cost us, Mr. Baldwin? We stood to make 150 quid a week out of him. Yeah. For once in his life, we've been raking it in. You know, like you do all the time. How much did you say? She said 150 quid. It's true, and we turned it down. He wanted 100 handbags a week out of us, and he offered us 150 apiece. Yeah, I could have been sunning myself in Torremolinas this summer. Ivy, come in the office a minute, will you? Uh, oh, I I've got the P45s you asked for, yeah, Mr. Emily, just a minute. What is going on? Everything was so quiet yesterday when Mr. Baldwin was away, and I told him so this morning with some pride. Well, just think yourself lucky you don't know what's going on, because if I thought you did, I'd blame you for this lot. No danger. 
You heard him say that, did you, Ivy? One fifty a handbag and he wanted a hundred a week. Definitely. I heard him myself. Mind you, I still sent him back in. I told him we were trespassing him to get himself off at premises. I said, there's no way we're going to get involved with you again, I said. We're loyal to Mr Baldwin, we are. I said, we won't make you another handbag, not if your mother's life depended on it. Well, you're a bit of a burke, aren't you? Pardon? Hey, Molly! Uh, yes, Mr Baldwin. Get handbag Sammy on the phone. Tell him to get his chapati round here pronto. Handbag Sammy? Chapati? What about these P45s? Don't ask me, Emily. I don't know what's going on now, either. And you keep stum. Stum? You go, shut Emily. I'll tell you what, Rosie. I'll just take a couple of bottles to your regular driver, and then you and me, I'll have a nice little set down the dump, eh? Who do you think you are, Noddy? Hey? If Noddy won't talk to motor in snow, yeah, well, how's Chalky then? Hey, lucky to be in such expert hands. I'll have him back to work in no time. You want to be more careful with that heap of jelly mould, yeah? You splashed her then. I'm sorry about that, Edward. A few little spots on your nice clean muck cart. It'll show up in the snow. Listen, it is not a muck cart. Anyway, you did it on purpose. I'll do it again as well. Not asking for it, you are, gee. Oh, get lost. Look at the state of this place. You'd think a bomb had dropped on it. Hmm. Where'd you keep your ties? The only thing's been down there. Get out of it! Oh, you scared life out of me! This is what it's all about, all this show of sympathy, coming round there flaming snooping. Well, an eye opener. I didn't know you were made of brass. I sure am made of in a minute. There's 300 quid in that book, and here's me penny pinching, living from hand to mouth. Yeah, as long as you keep your mitts off mine. You could have had to pay me proper for tending you instead of expecting charity. This is for a rainy day. Have you seen my coat? I'm wet through. You can drown for all I can. That's going to come round in the first place. 300 quid in that book. I don't suppose you'd mind spending it on her next door, buying her a fur coat. That's what I call putting it to a good use. You're a bad one, Tom Whiteley. You'll need me when you can't even go for your pension. I won't trust you with my pension. All right. Well, I'll Eddie. bottles. Good job. How are you diddling? Well, fair. Country we've got to put up with. Have you finished talking to that lorry? What's this? <laughs> it was outside just now, talking to Boomwagon, calling her <laughs> Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good name for her, isn't it? I mean, she's got a lot of feminine qualities, you know. I He's mean, she's good. daft, I told you. Hey, don't you get into too fond of that wagon or my job. Hey, don't be daft. Anyhow, I'm feeling a lot better. Glad to hear it. Right. Thank you very much, Mrs. Morton. And we'll definitely have some beef sausage in the day after tomorrow. All right. Right, Alf? Uh, yeah, Wednesday. Another satisfied customer. You know, it's a wonder I've got any left while you've been away. I've been that bad-tempered on my own. Mind you, you were a bit that way before you went to your mother's, weren't you? Was I? Yeah, I thought there was somewhat up. I thought you had a problem. Nah, no, just time of the year, that's all. <laughs> oh, don't tell me. Listen, when I've made my pile, I am going to winter abroad every year. When I've made my pile. I'll come with you. You're on. And we'll live in a little mud hut on a South Sea island together somewhere. And in the meantime, I'll make you a cup of tea. Yeah, I'll do it. No, oh, I'll do it. I'm that glad to see you. Oh. Oh, Hi. Don't tell me. You've decided not to put in for that job after all. What? You're going in for Boss of ICI instead. Uh, no, no, that's the next one. No, um, no, it's about the pantomime tonight. Yeah. Um, well, do you mind if I don't come? Uh, I want to do a bit of digging, you know, see one or two people about what the competition's going to be like for this job. Oh. Um, I mean, I don't like pantomimes very much anyway. I know the plot. OK. Um, I'll see you later then, and don't make any tea for me. Ken? I was looking forward to going. I, I was looking forward to going with you. Yeah, well, especially you won't with be on your own, will you? You've got Tracy and Uncle Albert. Thank you, Moses. Look what's walked in. 
Sammy flaming, Nora. What are you doing back here again? What kind of a welcome's that? I thought you were all madly in love oh, with me. Oh, Sammy, do us a favour and off it. And if you see us in the street, just ignore us. But the gaffer wants to see me, Mr Baldwin. You what? I got a phone call, didn't I? Sammy, my son. Nice to see you. To see you nice. Oh, uh, hello, Mr Baldwin. Similar, I'm sure. Any friend of my girls is a friend of mine. They are the most fantastic judges of character. Flipping stroll on. Anything wrong, Vern? Well, for one thing, we'd like to know what's going on if we've still got our jobs or not. Jobs? Well, of course you've got your jobs. They're so sensitive, my girls, Sammy. One harsh word, they think I've given them the elbow. I just don't <laughs> believe this. Me neither. I mean, if they're not working miracles on those machines, I can't supply you with the handbags, can I? I thought you didn't want to know. But that's what the girls I say. don't. Uh, look, Squire, can we stop talking in riddles? Here, here. At that price, I don't want to know. At that price. Well, what's your price, then? Not 150. Not even 160. Oh, wish you'd shut up, Squire. That is my spiel. 175. Each or a pair? Each, but only if you can guarantee the quantity, right? 500 a week. What are you trying to do? Stoop me naked? Sammy, driving around in that murk, you need clothes. One pound sixty-five, and I'll stick a poster on me stall advertising your fame. One seventy-five. My girls do a very good job, as you very well know. You will think that these handbags have been stitched by angels with gossamer thread. Why don't you come and flog them as well? I mean, you'd do better than me. <laughs> I would. I would. So what do you say then, eh? Don. You've talked me into it. Come in the office. We'll talk about delivery dates. Right. Oh. Hey, Mr Baldwin. You little chuck you. Thanks, that's great, yeah, Mr Baldwin. Yes, you. but what made you change your mind? Oh, wait for it. Well, you know me. I never turn down a business proposition, especially when there's a fat profit in it for me. For you? What about us? Yeah. yeah. What do we get out of it? Well, you get the satisfaction of a job well done, don't uh... you? Oh, mind you, I may throw in a small bonus, depending on how quick you can turn them out. I mean, after all, this is only a sideline, isn't it? Ivy, want you? Can't do that, can I? It just does. It's not as simple as that. Them handbags were our idea. We designed them, so they're still our property. Do you know I knew it? I knew it in my flipping bones. The only way to get out of Baldwin is to be as cute as he is. We should have broken here at midnight and done him. Uh, well, don't worry. He hasn't hurt the last of that. I'm going to get Union in on this. Oh, where have you heard that before? <laughs> Alf, I'll have to be going in a bit. I've got to get Tracy and Uncle Albert the tea. Yeah, well, just give me another five minutes, will you, love? That's all. I've got to finish this VAT. OK. Hi. Hi. I saw you were alone through the window. What good eyesight you've got. Where's Al? In the back. Right, I'll be quick then. I have just been a very clever boy. So what's new? Exactly. And I want to celebrate. I know I feel like celebrating with you. So what about a nice quiet table for two in some cafe tomorrow night, eh? Well, they could change them going to the pantomime, wouldn't they? What are you going to see? Babes in the wood. <laughs> well... What a good idea. Isn't it? See ya. I won't be a second now, though. No hurry. Oh, come on, Ivy. I'd have thought you'd have had the Henshaw order wrapped and out by now. But we're not behind, Mr. Ball. Well, we're not be late delivering. There's no need to start slacking, is there, eh? I want them finished with this order and well on with the handbags by tonight. Well, what's it suddenly all gone quiet for? Excuse me, did you say something about handbags? Yes, that's right. I want you to finish this order and get on with the handbags. Why, what's the problem? It's not been sorted out yet, Tasta. Well, what's there to sort out? I know you can make them. I know that from bitter experience. You were making them behind me back. Yeah, but what we'd like to know is what do we make out of it? Yeah, it's a fair question, Mr Baldwin. All right, well, I'll give you a fair answer. I get continued production, you get continued employment, which is a wage packet at the end of the week, right? No, no, I think what the girls think is that they're entitled to something on top with these bags, Mr Baldwin. There's no think about it. We're, I think we're entitled. <laughs> yeah, you'd have never got that sad bag order if it hadn't been for us. That's right. Yeah, it was that got that deal, you know, from Flashy Sammy. And, come to think of it, we designed them and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You girls, you really slay me. You've got more cheek than a nudist outing. If I wasn't a very forgiving man, you'd all be on the dole now, wouldn't you? Eh? Because what you did was a second offence. You used my time, my electricity, my cloth and my thread. And now you want a bonus? Well, talk about bare robbery. At least a Lone Ranger wore a flaming mask. 
Ivy, get on with her job. I've got things to do. Well, you heard him. Well, I'm making no handbags for him. No, me. That's how it is, Ivy. And if Mike Baldwin doesn't like it, then stuff it up his... Cash me a jumper. Um, yes. Oh. <sighs> you finished with your tea, Uncle Albert? Aye. Do you want some more, Ken? No, no, thanks. It's like swatting for an exam, this. I'm trying to anticipate some of the questions they might ask me at that interview. You know, I'm surprised you ever chucked up teaching. Oh, that's going back a long way now, Uncle Albert. I know it was a good job. Finished at four o'clock and half the time on holiday. Teaching's a tough job, believe me. Teachers always say that. They don't know they're born. You might have been in master by now. No, I'm not going to argue might have been with you. This job that I'm going for now, that is the job that I want. Could have been made for me. Do you think you'll get it? Well, to be honest, I do, yes. I've got the right experience for it. I've got the seniority. Yes, I think I ought to get it. Well, you know, it's not what you know. It's who you know what counts. Yes, well, I'm not unknown amongst the people who are making the appointment, Uncle Albert. Oh. Better get back. Let Alf get his dinner. Are, uh, are you going out tonight at all, Ken? No, I should be doing some swatting. I want to be able to chuck a bit of chapter and verse around at this interview. Well, I, uh... I might go out for an hour, then, if you're stopping in with Tracy. Where are you going tonight? I, uh, I just thought I'd go around and see Carol. Well, you're around there till the night. Well, she's, uh, she's got a new baby, Uncle Albert. Oh. Well, when you see one, you've seen the lot. Ah, uh, see you later. Bye. Uh, ta -da. Bye. Hello, Bet love. When I had door slam for a minute, I thought of the Bride of Frankenstein. Who are you talking about? Not Phyllis. Uh, never a way she isn't. In and out like a fiddler's elbow. Nattering me, making me life a misery. You don't fool me, you know, Chalky. What do you mean? Well, we all know about you and Phyllis. I mean, all that bickering is just a big cover-up. Oh. oh, yeah. It's obvious, isn't it? Underneath it all, you're like Hans Ziegler and Webster Booth. It's the oddest romance in Weatherfield. Hey, old oh, John, I don't mind a joke, but it's a beggar of pantomime. <laughs> what are you doing? Come round here to upset me? No, I've come round to see how you're doing. Do you know, since you've been poorly, trade's been dead slack at the Rovers. Oh, I'm up at worst of it now. Flew it, love. So much at sort, eh? Anyhow, how are you going on, love? Uh, you look a bit chesty to me. That'll do. See, you're definitely feeling perky again. How's uh, Bob doing out in Australia? Well, he we were never won much for writing once, our Bob. Uh, a letter from our Craig. Oh. From yesterday. How's he liking? Here, have a read. Hello. <laughs> Been to the beach twice, eh? Getting sunburnt. And his dad and all, he says. Bet your Bob looks all right with an all-over suntan. <laughs> Well, he seemed to be liking. Aye. Oh, that sunshine. Wish I were there. Aye. What's up with it, Brenda? Oh, it's getting stitches. Oh, it's so it's hot. Hey, look who's there. Sam, Sam, the market stall, ma'am. How are you, me diddling flower? You are fighting fit? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Is it Mr Baldwin you want? No, it's you I want, but it's him i got to see. Hey, up! I can't see much in the way of denim handbags. No, and you won't either. Not till we get proper rate for doing them. He's dead tight, your boss, isn't he? Well, too mean to give you the steam off his cup of tea. Don't you worry, girls, I'll sort him out for you. Uh -huh. Well, I'll say this much for Sam, eh? It's full of Eastern promise. Yeah. yeah, that's no problem. Look, I've got to go, see you. Right. Hello, Sammy. I thought we had a deal, you and me. Oh, what's your problem? Handbags, Michael, handbags. 500 a week, £1.75 a time, cash in hand. 
Well, where are they? No sweat, mate. Then flippin' well is. Look, I want a batch of them bags Friday dinner, because that is when I am heading for Geordie Land, and I have got to be in the market Saturday morning with the bags on the stall. You will be all right, I promise you. Your girls haven't even started yet. Sammy, don't get worried. It makes you look Italian. Eh? Hey? Come with me. Girls, look at Sammy and tell me what he is. Are you trying to get us in front at race relation, boy? Sammy is a customer. The customer is always right. And he wants denim handbags. Mm, we already know what he wants. Yeah, and we know what you want. And yeah, all. the point is, what do we get out of it? Yeah. Treat the girls right. Don't be such a Scrooge. A what? Blimey, mate. Dickens. Charles Dickens. It's part of our heritage. Our? Ooh. Anyway, never mind about that. Now, listen, you girls. We will work out a rate. A good rate. A generous rate. But if we don't deliver, no one gets anything, do they? Look, I've got things to do. Now, I'll give you a tinkle tonight, but if you haven't got the job sorted out by then, you can forget it. I'll have to look elsewhere. Hey, any time you fancy, kid, all you gotta do is whistle. Ta-da, girls. Ta-da, Sammy. Right, you lot. You heard him. You're gonna do yourself out of work, are you? What's more to the point are you? Right, well, uh, I'll tell you what. Ten p a bag. Oh, is that eight? Give over, between you. Well, 500 a week, that'll make us... 50 yeah. quid a week. Sure. Well, that's not much, is it, between a lot of us? You can say that again. Who's asking you? Uh, 40 pence a bag, that'd be fair. Yeah, that's fair enough. Oh, give over. Oh, that's you. I'm sick of this job, I am. You get shot at from both sides. Ladies, listen, you know me. I am a very fair man. <laughs> yeah, and I'm Princess Diana. Of course, they talk to the pets when they're on their own, for company. Have you got any? No. Of course, you've got a house full, haven't you? You've got that lovely lass. Hey. I used to have a budgie, you know. Mm. Mm. It got out, though. Never come back. I don't blame it. I see your Craig's enjoying himself, then. How do you mean? Oh, soaking up that sunshine, going to the, all the beach and all that. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, his letter. Chalky showed it me. A letter from our Craig? He never showed it me. He never learned Lynch, do you? Hey, give us a scotch down here, will you? Right, Squire. Hey, right. what's all this about you and young Tilsley? What about him? Well, I heard you nearly got to scrapping. He's a bit young for you, isn't he, Len? He's only just finished scrapping in the schoolyard, that one. Just keep that out, eh? I'm only showing a healthy interest. Well, I can do without it. Oh, don't get shirty, mate. One of sunny nature like me. That's right. Cheers. Take no notice of the hired help. You can't keep anything private round here. Can't you? Well, you don't try enough. Hi. Hello, then. Hi. Right, what are you having? I'm half a lager, please. Half of lager, half of bitter. I'll get Scotch from... No, you won't. Scotch from Mike and a pint, then. Uh, no, I'm just going for me tea. You sure? Yes, sir. Right, that's all, then. But... Oh, no, make it another half. This will do for Uncle Albert. See you, then, eh? Don't Ciao, then. Come on, mate. See you. Come on, mate. Everything all right? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. <coughs> Where will I see you? I'd better come to your place, about eight. Right. Well, you know what my girls are like? They drive a hard bargain. Or at least they try to. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Trade's flourishing, I take it. Everything's absolutely fantastic. Everything. You'll grab that bin wagon, that's what I want to know. Sure, mate. With me behind the wheel, it's never been in better hands. Because driving a bin wagon's like looking after a woman. I was thinking you're out of practice a little bit, knocking that old sign down in Nelson Street. Give over. If you can handle a dusk, I can handle a lass. Main thing is give yourself plenty of room for manoeuvre. And the, uh, the gang like having me behind the wheel. They reckon me timing's just right, you know. They're not having to uh, rush like with the bins. But then, they're not having to hang about waiting either. No, I think uh, when you fit, you okay, I think you better go back on the gang. I'll stay behind the wheel, eh? On your bike. Well, can the ride shotgun, then? You've had that. When I'm fit, you're back on the show, leather. Oh, hell. Hey, you'll not be told, will you? Drapesing about the house at the mercy of every draft. You should be in bed, not messing about with your daft mates. Yeah, well, eh, uh, i better be on my way. I'll see you. You're not going, are you? Well, things to do, you know. I thought I'd have a few scoops down the rovers. Hang on, I'll come with you. You're not stepping out of this house with that chest of yours. It'd be... Suicide. Well, sometimes I'm tempted. And don't you give him any ideas, unless you want him on your conscience. 
Yeah, well, uh, I'll see you then. Yeah, tell that, Eddie. I have a bone to pick with you. Oh, there's a novelty. You've had a letter, haven't you, for a Craig? Oh, haven't you? Not yet. There I am in a public house, and barmaid can tell me more about my grandson than I can myself. Yeah, he'll write to you when he's ready. Ah, well, if you can show it, barmaid, you can show it to me. Well, I was going to, wasn't I? But I forgot. I mean, I've been poorly, haven't I? Ah, well, come on, then. I had it somewhere. I don't know where I put it. This place, it. Look at the state of this place. It was a palace when I left it yesterday, and now it's a pigsty. Just nipping down to the ceiling drop. Egg and crisp triple decker or a crumbly cheese double decker? Is your single decker car outside? Mm -hmm. Yours if you want it. But I think it's only insured for accountants and vicars' wives on Sunday afternoons. Not necessarily together, but they're not. <laughs> right. I'm off then. I'm going to see your Auntie Carol, darling. Well, I'm bound down to go. There's some room folk about. Bye bye, lovey. Be a good girl. Ah, uh, she should be in bed in half an hour, Ken. Yeah, that's all right. I'll see you. You, uh, you have a nice time. Right. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you, love. Hello, chalky lad. Back in the land of the living, are we? Only just. And if Phyllis thinks I've been out of the house, I'll be having a relapse. I'm middling out, but I shouldn't be out, really. Well, listen, why don't I come round to your house in the morning? You tell me what you want, and I'll drop it in for you. Ah, well, you see how Phyllis is doing shopping for me. She loves it when somebody's sick. Give her a chance to take over. Well, you know what they say about medicine, don't you? If it's not nasty, it's not doing you no good. Aye. That's what I want to see you about. Some of the medicines that she won't give me. Give us four cans of air, oh, eh? right. Hey, make it eight, Alf. Best to be safe than oh, sorry. Hey, I could do with more customers like you, Chalky. I'll tell you what, when Phyllis comes round, I'll tell her to be nice to you. Ah, say no to you. You'll be wasting your breath. Well, I reckon she's a bit fond of you. You what? You're the second that said that. She only nags you because she likes you, you know? I mean, some people show their affection that way. Listen, if I go to her house, which I'm not, she can nag me. She's on home ground. When she comes round to my place, she's not. That's not in my book. Nagging away. You've not seen me, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Shall I uh, take your coat off? Mr. Baldwin, nice to see you again, sir. Evening, Marco. Shall I take Madame's coat? Thank you. Now then. Have you got a nice table for us? Of course, sir. For you, always. Is this all right for you, Mr. Bolton? Yes, fine. Madame? Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I think we'll have a drink. Uh, what do you fancy? Uh, gin and tonic, please. Right, a large gin and tonic and uh, my usual, please. One large gin and one large scotch. You all right, then? Yeah, fine. It's a really nice place, this, isn't it? Oh, it's good food here. I think you like it. And don't worry. You won't see anyone from Coronation Street. Actually, I believe you. I don't think I've ever been anywhere as fancy as this. You're not nervous, are you? Well, bits. Don't be. I'll look after you, I promise. Your drinks won't be a moment, Mr Baldwin. The chef's special is lobster tonight. He also recommends the pheasant. Well, there's no rush, Marco. We'll have a little think about it. On your own tonight, hey, Eddie, lad. That Marion kicked into touch, has she? Hey, has she seen the light? You know, come to her senses. If you must know, she's washing her hair. Washing her hair? Washing you out of it, more like. <laughs> come to think of it, Yates, there is a resemblance between you and Dandruff. You can't needle me, Fred. Me and Marion are very happy. I'll say one thing, Yates, you're smarter than you look. You've been engaged a long time, but you're not dashing up that aisle, are you? We'll get married when it suits us. Do me a favour, mate, will you? Don't rush. Don't keep worrying the lad about marriage. There's enough folk frightened of it already. Well, for good cause and all. Give over. 
Hi, uh, Ken, you're in favour of marriage, aren't you? Oh, a great institution, yes. Don't say it, Fred, or I'll crown you. I never said a word. Doesn't stop me thinking, though. What are you having, Kenneth? No, nothing, thanks, Eddie. I just want two bottles of strong ale to take home with me, please. Oh, aren't you going to stop and flirt with me? Sorry, I'm babysitting with Uncle Albert. Deirdre's gone to see a friend. Thank you. Is everything all right, Mr. Baldwin? Yeah, fine, thanks, ma'am. Yes, very nice, thank you. That first all right for you? Oh, yeah, lovely. I think I'm a bit full, though. Oh, no, you just leave room for the uh, suite. They've got a great suite, Johnny. You know this place very well, don't you? And they certainly seem to know you. I've done a few deals over this table. Brought a few girlfriends here as well, have you? Mm, one or two, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked you that. I don't mind. No, it's pretending I live like a monk, is it? You, uh, enjoying yourself? Oh, of course I am. Not nervous anymore? No, not really. Hey, I'll tell you what, though. I feel a bit underdressed compared to some of the women here. You see, I couldn't go over the top when I was getting ready or else Ken might have spotted something was wrong. Although, on second thoughts, I don't suppose he would. You know, I don't think he actually sees me these days. I think he thinks I'm just part of the wallpaper. He must be mad. I mean, you may not be turned out the way you wanted to be, but... As far as I'm concerned, you look absolutely fantastic. But then, you always have done. Not sure whether Mr. Mills would have given the free kick for offside. The linesman was certainly flagging. The right side lost the boot. Oh, the it's only me. By heck, have they pulled your house down or something you're never away from here? I've only come round to help you to see that you've got everything you want. When you say good night, I will have. Hey, you're a rude article. You always were. It's good job I'm used to you. Hey, is there anything you want when I go shopping in the morning? Not that I can think of. Ah, well, if you do. All right, uh... Hey, uh, I found that letter from our Craig. It's on the sideboard. Have a read. Hey. Oh, bless him. Makes you go queer when you see his handwriting. Hey, ain't it come a long way? Uh, I Bob used to say this house was pokey. I think he's big without that lad. I used to shout at him deputies off to school, ball him out to do his own work. Place is empty without that lad. He seems to have settled in all right. Uh, he's not a bit homesick, is he? Brings it home to you, doesn't it? We'll never see that lad again. Go on, you can fly out there. You've seen the adverts. Yeah, I'm not flying around the world. Yeah, same with me. You're feeling lonely now, aren't you? I've had it a lot. You never get used to it. A woman can stand it. But a fella, they need company. Ooh, what's that smell? Hell. A man's best friend. You're never sure to come to one of these. Do you want another quadra? Oh, no, honestly, I better not. Oh, well, if you're sure, we make a move. Oh, thank you. That's for you, Marco. Thank you very much, Mr. Baldwin. I hope you enjoyed it. Excellent, thank you very much. Thank you, Deirdre. What for? Well, for this evening. It's been absolutely terrific. I'd like to do a lot more of it. You don't mind me calling at this time, Ken, but I saw that the light was on, otherwise I wouldn't have bothered no, you. Oh, that's all right. Oh. oh, I don't want to wake Mr. Tatlock up. <laughs> don't worry, I'm just about to nudge him and suggest it's time for bed. Oh, well, I really came to see Deirdre. She was talking about knitting a jumper for Tracy the other day, and I knew I had a pattern somewhere. Anyway, I've just this minute unearthed it. Oh, good, she'll be glad of that. Um, 
Has Deirdre gone to bed? I knew I shouldn't have come round this late. No, she's out, actually. She just popped round to see a friend. Oh, she's late, isn't she? Mm. No, she shouldn't be long. Um, would you like a cup of tea? I'm oh. just going to make one. No, no, thanks, Ken. I must get back home. Time I was in bed. <laughs> yeah, best place for us all. What time is it, Mike? Uh, 11 o'clock. Time I was getting back. Well, come on, the night's young yet. Not for me, it isn't. I've had a smashing night, Mike. Thanks. My pleasure. Mm. I suppose I'll be wasting my time suggesting a club. Well, yes, you are. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we pop back to my flat for the last drink, eh? I've really got to get back. Deirdre, I'll ask you a question. You're not regretting tonight, are you? No. Should I be? No. In my experience, the things you regret are the things that you don't do. The chances you miss. That's what you regret. My place? Yeah. All right. All right. You know what them will be, don't you? My birthday cups. They will, that's. Um, we don't have a Miss Tracy Langton living here, do we? No, I don't no. think so. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, of course we do. It's you, isn't it? There you are. You better open those then. Come here first. Come here. Happy birthday, love. Oh, isn't that lovely? What do you say to Uncle Albert? Thank you. Will you really kiss them? <clears throat> Uh, dolled up early, aren't you? I thought the interview wasn't until this afternoon. No, it isn't. I've got a lot on. I may not get back here for lunch. What's this job you're after? He's told you, Uncle Albert. Well, I forget, Donna. Well, it's... What is it? <laughs> Deputy Director of Social Services to Weatherfield Council. Well, they must pay well with a title like that. Well, not a fortune, but there's a certain amount of prestige attached to the job. Not that prestige buys the groceries. No, oh, and me sitting here won't sell any either, so will you get from under my feet? Uh, if this interview goes well, we'll go out tonight, OK? Yeah, all right. You're not babysitting, are you? Your friend Carol hasn't been on. Ah, uh, no. Good. There's a bit of a marathon session the other night. She's taking advantage of you, you know. You didn't come in till after one. Well, they don't get out much, Uncle Albert. I, I don't blame them for staying out late when they do. Yeah, well, if she does get on to you today, tell her not tonight, Josephine. Uh, right, OK, I will right. now. Will you go? OK. Keep your fingers crossed. Good luck. Right. Bye. Right. Let's see who your birthday cards are from. Yeah, hang on. Yeah, hang on. I've got the number. Uh, just a minute. Yeah, it's a code I gave you, plus 2517. Yeah, that's right. Well, you can mention my name if you like. Don't suppose it'd do any good, though. I just wish I had a mate. OK. Yeah. See you. Bye. Is that a photo of me carrying around with you? Ah, oh, now how did you guess? Were well, you looking pleased with yourself? Your lady friend, is that? Now come on, Vera. You know me long enough. What makes me smile? Money. Dead right? Money. The thought of you lot grinding away out there, turning out thousands of little handbags. Ha <laughs> ha! It's thoughts of profit. Right again, it's a thought of profit. Yeah, which we'd have had to ourselves if you went and stuck your oar in. Well, blame yourselves. I mean, a foreign or two of my time is bad enough, but being found out. That is a sin. Well, there's no need to rub it in. Well, look at it this way. You gained the best middleman in the business. The perfect setup. Or it would have been if you weren't still standing there. Eh? Well, how can I make a fortune if you're standing there gassing? Now, do you mind going back with the other ladies? 
Brought your coffee? Yeah, so I see. I hope it jokes, yeah. Thank you. Look, it's not exactly your Formula 3, and it's not exactly got a sliding roof, but it's a very fair vehicle. It's a bin wagon. Well, I know it's a bin wagon, but when you're behind that wheel, you could be driving a mare. She handles surprisingly well, you know. Like her, you mean? Fancy a pint, Fred? No, sir. How long are you going to be driving, then? <laughs> well, as long as it takes Jokey to get off the sick. He can stay as long as he likes for me. It's all extra bunts, isn't it? Oh, well, talking about extra bunts, and seeing as I'm in a good mood. Which isn't every day. Which isn't every day, as she says, but today I am. Listen, come here. Two o'clock, Exeter, over the sticks, Jeremiah Jones. Great little nag be about uh, sevens. He wants you to put a bet on for him. Yeah, well, he can go on once. He's going nowhere near the bookies. I don't want no one to put any bets on for me, thank you. I can put my own bets on, thank you very much. You can phone them in. He can't, not anymore. They have a nasty habit of asking who it is, and when they find out, they don't want to know, do they, Fred? I'm not phoning no bets, I'm going down. I'm going to put the cash on personal over the counter myself. No, you're not, love, not on the two o'clock. You're not leaving me stuck here on my own. It'll take you half an hour if you run both ways. Oh, give over. It's only a couple of minutes in the rover there and back. But the rover's in the garage, isn't it? And it stops there until Her Imperial Majesty lifts a little finger. Don't fret, Chuck. There's ways of arranging it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, Chucky? Pint of cough mixture. <laughs> Use the light bottle to take you out. Hey, you're not better, are you? Oh, thanks very much. It better be better coming in here boozing. You ought to be back at work. I'm convalescent, aren't I? Ah, yeah, you fellas can't half swing the leg, can't you? He's right, you know. I know a fella who once kidded on, he'd fallen down the cellar steps and dislocated his spine. He stopped in bed for two weeks and there was nothing wrong with him. You remember him, don't you, Fred? In a pub, it were. Shut it, Lynch, will you? <laughs> Everything all right? Fine, thanks, Mrs Walker. Oh, Mrs Walker, now, <laughs> it is in the morning that you want me to take you to the licensed victuallers, do, isn't it? Yes, it is. Why? Well, I just thought that I'd uh, like to get the car all nice and spick and span. I'd like to get it out first thing in the morning. Yes, do that. Only, <laughs> you see, it's this chemist round the corner. He has a nasty habit of parking the car in front of the garage doors, you know, so uh, I thought I'd get it out well before two. Yes, you'd better. <laughs> I bet you can't be so clever. Be sure your sins will find you out. No chance, Lynch. No chance. Hello there. Where have you been hiding yourself? I haven't been hiding. It's you that hasn't been looking. You must be joking. I've been over every two minutes. I must have bought 2,000 cigars. Well, you must have been coming at the wrong times then. Well, anyway, the manager at that restaurant we had dinner at uh, can't wait to see you. So, uh, we're about tonight. It's a bit silly. Right. Before you start, I'm on my lunch break. Then after that, I've got to, where I'm bought a few groceries. I'm going over to the infirmary to have blood transfusion. He's fucking blood over there. <laughs> Working yard, is he? Yeah, I want to make him a millionaire. You try and get him some brass out of him. You can start tomorrow night if you like. All right, then. My place about seven. Yeah, or as soon as I can make it. Or as soon as you can make it. Right, well, one of me, I might as well have some, and I'll uh, give us a couple of pounds of those pills. Don't that annoy you? Yes, in more ways than one. I meant the dripping. Don't go on about Len Fairclough again. Well, we haven't started yet. It was him who made the agreement, you know. First day he opened. You look after my van, and I look after your property. Well, I fixed his van, didn't I? Didn't I? Yes, love. You fixed his van. What's he done about that lot? Sweet Fanny Adams. You don't talk to me about starting on him. Why not Ron have a go at him? Why do you get all the aggro? Good point. But find Ron. Well, it's not good enough. You are supposed to be partners. Ah, uh, you know Ron. He's probably got ten other partners scattered around town. We can't pin him down too hard. Well, I'll get you dinner before it gets cold. That pie were piping hot when it left the cafe. Are you going back? No, I finished for the day. I'm going home, picking up Nicky, knocking him over the head with the hammer, and putting his feet on. It's all right for some, isn't it? Mm -hmm. ah. Don't make a noise when you come in. I might be asleep. Thank 
you very much. I would have liked to have gone a bit further, but not to have meant going a lot further, if you see what I mean. Creep. Blame yourself, Susie, you get them too excited. Boo! Where's Fred? You were here, weren't you? Gone to get car out, put that bet on. Oh, he's not scarfed off, has he? Does he ever do out house? You don't want him, do you? Fred! You be joking. Hey, funny thing happened this morning. I take the lid off this bin down Sebastopol Street, and there on the top is a dead tortoise. So I pick it up, I put it on the flags, go to the back door, knock on the door, this woman comes out. I said, excuse me, missus, I said, we can't say dead tortoises. I said, D dig a little hole and bury it, you know, say a few words over it. I mean, it's obviously a pet, give it a good send-off. Anyway, she starts arguing the toss as how it's being dead and it comes under the heading of refuse and we're refuse collectors, so it's up to us to take it away. Well, she's right, isn't she? Rubbish! It's livestock, isn't it, dead tortoises? I thought you said it was dead. Well, that's it, exactly. It comes under livestock. I mean, look, if her husband kicked the bucket, she's not going to bundle him up and stick him in the dustbin, is she? Oh, I won't be too sure, love, not down Sebastopol Street. Yeah, well, I wasn't having any. I said, anyway, missus, I said, how do you know the thing's dead? Very hard to tell the tortoises, you know. She said, of course it's dead, look at it. Points down and there it is, the other side of the yard. Walked all the way. I mean, would you credit it? <laughs> Bye, come, Eddie, you lead an interest in life. Yeah. I thought you wanted it. Come on, then. We'll both have a nice little sleep, eh? Yeah. No? Oh, I hope so. Yeah. Shh. Maybe they'll go away. Oh, well. I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, little mother. It's your Auntie Susie. Standing on the door set, waiting to be asked in. Well, take your coat on. Sit down. What brings you up here? Oh, it's a long story, kid. Hey, go and get the kettle on, will you? <laughs> well, it's very nice to know you haven't changed. <sighs> get off! Go and do your vandalising somewhere else. I hope you're looking after her. Like it was me old. Oh, just look at that. It's got the old flaming streets of parking and he has to go and stick it in front of my nose. Well, haven't you found reverse yet? You want me to show you where it is? Don't worry, I think I can manage. Oh, take care. to the back of me. Get over, you ain't having a curse on the pavement. It was you that backed into me, you great bird. Excuse me, I don't think Mrs. Walker heard. Shall I go and fetch her? Oh, what a flaming mess. 
You're the right one you are. Now, that's right, Chucky. Go on, you have a go at him. I will and all. What the hell are you playing at, fat chance? We have not been best bin wagon at year. I'm on about the flipping car. Look, you worry about your car, man. I worry about my bin wagon. Oh, I intend to, yeah? What are you going to do about this, Yates? Me? What's it got to do with me? It was you that came sneaking round the corner. Give over, you reversed into me, you back straight into me, you great bird. You could see I was reversing, you just kept on coming. That was out of the car, that was on the pavement. Aye, that's what you say. Somebody must have seen me. I thought, oh, no, could I just say crunching? Hell, you must have seen me. I look. was talking to her, wasn't I? <laughs> well, somebody must have seen me. Look, nobody saw you because you were in the car driving into the back of me wagon. And scratching at the flaming glory. Hey, 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 you've had a little accident. There's thousands happen every day. Think yourself lucky there's nobody injured. Nobody's injured yet. The Duchess hasn't heard about it yet. There could be some nasty casualties when she does. Oh, flaming, shut up, will you, Lynch? Look, first things first. We've got to go through the proper procedures. Now, what's your name and address? Oh, I don't know about you, Douglas, but I'm not standing here listening to this rubbish. Come on inside. Hey, but it's the right mess, in there. Yeah, well, it was amazing. The party. Charming. Sharp! What's going on? Where is everybody? Hey, didn't you hear it, Mrs. Walker? Well, in a terrible car crash right outside. And my staff leave the post to look at him, well, really. But it's like Elsie said, it was just straight outside. Was anybody hurt? No, no, thank the Lord. It was in a car, a lorry. Ain't cars knocked about pretty bad. Mrs. Duckworth, I refuse to shed tears about material objects. Now, a car is replaceable, but human life is precious It was it your is... car, Mrs. Walker. It was your car. My car? Eddie Yates is back in his My car. up the road. Fred comes round the My corner Rover. and thump, just yeah. like that. Hey, it's the right mess. Fred, is this true? Look, don't worry about it, Mrs. Walker. I mean, we are covered by insurance. But what happened? My lovely car. Well, it weren't my fault, Mrs. Walker. I mean, you know me. I look after that car as if it was my own. If it was Yates. With that idiot, Yates, he'd been drinking, that's it. God knows, he'd been boozing all day. He wants breathalyzing, Mrs. Walker, that Yates. Oh, hey, that's ye. Is this a terrible dream? I'm afraid not, Mrs. Walker. Yeah, you learn a lot more before the day's out. You want to watch it chucking accusations round? I chuck what I want around, because oh, you know it's the truth, don't you? rest, can't you? Come on, Mrs. Walker, I'll make you a cup of tea. Oh, dear, I must inspect the damage. But by all means, make the tea. Hey, you, listen. Have a word with that insurance fella. He'll know what to do. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get the garage onto it straight away, Mrs. Walker. Don't go looking at it now and upsetting yourself. Of course, you'll lose your no claims bonus, you know. You always do. Thank you, Mrs. Ogden. As always, you're a tower of strength. No. And he was trying it on. Oh. I got lift as far as Stockport, no. right? Then he picked me up just this side of Mersey Square and he started the minute I got in the car. And he kept it up till he chucked me out about two miles away. We could be ever sighted in the taxi one way or the other, I can tell you. Oh, that's some fella's rotten. Oh, I picked the right one, all right. I mean, he looked all right and I thumbed him down. Still. We're all right, aren't we, cheeky face? Your Auntie Susie's here all in one piece. No. Have yes. you had any lunch? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that. No. Have you? I wasn't going to bother. Well, I don't as a rule, but I haven't had any breakfast either. What do you fancy? Egg and chips? Oh, smash it. There's only oven ready. I don't have anything else. So what brings you up here? Oh, I just fancy the change. I mean, London's all right, but all the jobs I got seemed to go until three o'clock in the morning. I was a croupie for six months. That was great. And a gambling club? You don't have croupies in Tesco's, do you? I don't know your mum. I know. And then I was a barmaid, and before that I was a hostess. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, don't get the wrong idea. It was in that gambling club before they took me on as a croupier. I just walked around with a tray of drinks, that's yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I liked it there. They were a nice crowd. And now you're back in Weatherfield? Now I'm back in yeah. Weatherfield. Anything exciting going on? Round here. You must be joking. Try go. So obvious, it wasn't. Come on, drink up. We're going to be late. Hold this and don't rush, kid. We've got a good excuse, haven't we? We're witnesses at an accident and we're to stay behind to give statements. Two? <laughs> well, you'll give one to me and I'll give one to you. <laughs> yeah, David. <laughs> hey, he's gone. Oh, good on him. Oh. Fred, he's got the car going. He's took it to Brown Tilsey's garage. He'd be doing better taking it to a scrapyard. Elsie, keep your voice down. She's scraping her eyes out back there. 
What was it she said? I refuse to shed tears over material objects. But that one, she thought it was somebody else's car. Oh, aye, true, true. Hey, listen, now we're having another drink, aren't we? Aye, why not? Just a little one. To stop my heart fluttering. Oh, I know. These accidents upset you. <laughs> Same <laughs> again, Beth. Oh, sir. Well, what do you reckon, Beth? Well, I couldn't do the lot here. I'd have to farm somebody out. Well, I'll tell you something for nothing. It's going to cost you. Cost me? It's not going to cost me, mate. It's the insurance. Now, the insurance are flipping Yates. I mean, I was just standing there. He came down the top of the street back well, straight into me. Well, spare the details, mate. mate. I don't want to know. All I do is repair them. Well, what's it going to cost, then? It's hard to say. Yeah, let's have a look. Well, there's a couple of wings. They cost a bum. Headlamps. Bumper, grill, bonnet. Radiator's gone for a burnton. They're a well-made car. But a corporation bin wagon. Flipping it, Fred, you don't have to pick them. I didn't pick it, mate. All right, all right. Well, how soon can you start? As soon as insurance tell me. We well, don't have to wait for them, do you? Too true, mate. I'd like to know where I'm getting the money from. That's the trouble. Nobody trusts anybody these days. What is it, any wonder? I thought you were reading the paper. It is a horrifying world. I wonder what her world would be like. Well, let's hope it's better than this one. Yeah, hey, uh, what's been going on out there? The whole street's covered in broken glass. Oh, has nobody swept it up yet? It's been an accident. It would have laughed. A DH backed his wagon into that posh car of Andy Walker. Oh, very funny, yeah. Anybody hurt? No. What a pity. Well? Oh, yes, I've been for an interview, haven't I? Oh, aren't they mad? That's not the word. How did you get on? Well, I think I stand as good a chance as anybody else. In fact, I will go so far as to say a better chance than some. Quietly confident? Uh, yes, I could even go that far. Good. So who knows, you might be losing those terrible neighbours with the kid and the uh, grumpy uncle. Oh, well, that's the bad news. Oh, isn't she nice? <laughs> Never mind, Emily, you can come and visit us in our executive semi-detached. I'm really pleased, love. Hey, steady on, we're not there yet. And I thought we were having a birthday party. We are. Tracy, are we having a party? Yes. Yes. Well, come on then, let's sit down. Oh, you stay where you are, Uncle Albert. Tracy, pass Uncle Albert the sandwiches, will you, love? Look, I'll put them in. <coughs> That's right. You give her a Thank you, love. Ta-da! Oh, oh, I say. Now then, nobody touches that until all the sandwiches have vanished. <laughs> and that goes for you, madam. Right, let's get stuck in. What's the matter? Oh, it's... Uh, oh, it's just silly me. It's... I'm so grateful to be made part of such a lovely family. You're all very lucky to have each other. Hi. Here's my Lord and Master. Hey, get in here. What are you doing? Oh, sure, she's a bit of fun. Come on. Doing here? Oh, we've done a swap. Gail's got my fella, and I've got you. What do you think? Oh, you spoilt it. He was going to say good I thing. know. That's why I spoilt it. Hey, she's stopping. Oh, he wants me. No, she's going to Elsie's, aren't you? Elsie's got a lodger. And Marion's staying there. Never mentioned a lodger. Look, uh, let me stop eating to get fixed up. Well, if you're staying for a while like this, uh, mind you, we've only got the couch. Oh, aren't you lovely? Were you disappointed when Droopy Drawers came in? You think you were just going to be you and me? Any of your tricks, Birchill, you're out on your ear. Me? Would I? No, oh, make one for me while you're at it, Jimbo. Sorry, I tried not to wake you. Oh, it's Brian. <laughs> Who do you think it was? <laughs> hey, oh. who's Jimbo? Me pet goldfish, I had him in London. A pet goldfish that brings you cups of tea in bed? Oh. They certainly know how to breed him down there. I've lived a bit since I was last here. Haven't we all? Haven't you? Could say that. You've grown up, Brian. And it shows. Uh, good or bad? Oh, good. That's good. Thing. What do you think you're doing? Me? I'm pulling the 
curtains. I mean, dressed like that. I've just got up, Flower. I've been asleep. I don't know about you, but I do not go to sleep in raincoat and Wellingtons. Well, at least put a dressing gown on. I haven't got yeah. one. I have. It's behind the bedroom door. Just for a minute. Oh, in a minute, I've had my cup of tea. Look, girl, Brian's a married man, and I think Tricky Nicky is a bit too young to be sidetracked, even by me. Do you think your Auntie Susie's gorgeous? No. Oh, go on, say yes, I'll buy some chock chock. <laughs> Stop trying to corrupt my son. We don't say chock chock in this house. I've had enough trouble trying to train his mother in law. Mm. Oh, thanks. Well, at least put your jacket on. Oh, she's all right. I'm going upstairs for a shave anyway. Do you want to cook breakfast or what? Um, I think I've got time, love. Just do me a couple of rounds of toast. I'll be down in five minutes. No. He's changed your husband. No! Do you think so? Mm. He's more mature. I think he was a bit wet in the old days, a right mummy's boy. And you told me, more than once. Oh, I didn't put you off, though, did it? Whenever did I take any notice of what you said? Yeah, very true. You could be a right stubborn little devil in your own quiet way, couldn't you? He gave Elsie quite a few bad moments. Listen, it was you that gave Elsie the bad moments. <clears throat> yeah. Good old Elsie. You, me and Elsie, the three musketeers. No. Ah, it's a shame it all broke up, in a way. Well, you've got to lead your own life, haven't you? You have. Me and Elsie, I got us still in the same boat. Footloose and fancy free. Do I wish you still were? What do you think? Yeah. Daft question. You got what you always oh. wanted, the whole happy nappies domestic bit. I never did. And now? What? Want a husband? Yes. Oh, I don't know. Why? You thinking of slinging yours out? No! And you're the one who used to think he was wet. Oh, that was in the old days, precious. How do you fancy going to a singles club with me one night, Fred Fair? What for? What for? So you can find yourself a woman, of course. Why should I go with you? You would be going with me so that I could find myself a fella. It's just that if we go together, it's a bit of moral support, like. Oh, you mean and split up later, like? Well, I wasn't suggesting that you spend the entire evening hung round my neck. No, it'd just be nice to know that there was a friendly face there, in the event of them all turning out to be dead weedy with little moustaches and pipes. <laughs> yeah, and the men might be horrible as well. <laughs> it's very funny, that, Hilda. I wish I'd thought of that. What have you found? If it's money, it's mine. No, it's an earring. It's probably mine as well. No, it's not. It's less than a foot across. My, we are witty today. What's put you in such a good mood? Ah. Well, my son and his wife have invited me down to stay with them for a few days. Oh, now that is nice. When are you going, love? Oh, I'm not. I can't afford to take the time off work. But they've asked me. He will be here at 1.30. Who's that, Mrs Walker? The insurance assessor. We're to meet him at Brian Tilsley's garage. You mean... you mean... You, you want me to go as well? I certainly do, considering you were responsible for the crash in the first place. Well, it weren't my fault, Mrs Walker. It was that idiot Yates. He came backing over the top of the street. I mean, he came straight down and, I mean, I weren't nowhere near. You parked it dead stupidly, though. I parked it where I parked it a thousand times before. I could smash his face in, I could, Yates. I'd hardly repair my car, would it? No, I mean, it, it won't be difficult, Mrs Walker. A couple of dents in the wings, scratch here and there, I mean... Not a lot when you say it fast, is it, Cock? Not forgetting new headlights and a bumper as well, I believe you mentioned. The insurance will pay. That is not the point, is it? It is the sheer inconvenience being without one's car at this particular time of the year that I find so trying. And all for the lack of a little forethought, a commodity which seems to me to be in very short supply these days. I wouldn't care, but they're never the same after, are they? I mean, my brother Archie had his car done up after a smash. Still rattles like a load of old scrap iron. Oh, very reassuring, Hilda, very reassuring. Why didn't you tell her that when she was here, eh? Well, she would have done, but she didn't think of it, did you, Hilda? Oh, can I have an on Shirley? The tin over at White Doctor Hospital and visiting hours are two and three. They say he's in for tests and it worries me. I mean, it's the third time he's been in. What are you testing for? That's what I want to know. Are you listening? Yes, Uncle Albert. Um, Herbert Whitelaw. Whitehead. What's up with you, any road? You've been acting tuppence to me all day. Well, things up with me. I've just got a few things on my mind, that's all. Now, if you want your dinner early, will let me get on with it? Oh. Right, get your party crock ironed. What? We're off to a dance, thee and me. When? Tonight. I know it's a bit short notice, but I said we'd go. Tonight? Oh, Ken, I, I can't. Why not? Well, I, I told you, I'm going out with Carol. 
Well, she's been going out with her a lot lately. Well, that's only the second time. Second time in a week. Yeah, Uncle Albert, please. Look, love, I'm sure she'll understand if you just say it's important. Well, why is it so important if we've only just been invited? Oh, we haven't just been invited. I've had the ticket. Well, I've known about the tickets for some time. I didn't bother getting them. Now I find out that all the top brass who interview me for that job will be there, so obviously it makes sense to go along, introduce the wife and all that. Uh, I, I mean, you meet these guys in a social context, obviously it all helps, and it keeps your name in front of them. You, uh, you really think it'll help you get that job? Well, let's put it this way. It won't do any harm. What sort of do is it? Well, hang on to your hat. It's organised by the social services, but actually it's a probation officer's bash. Probation yeah, officers? Yeah, it's all part and parcel of the same machinery. Anyway, what's wrong with probation officers? Scratch them and do they not also bleed? Oh, it's not that. Don't be daft. I... All right, then. I'll, uh, I'll run Carol, see if I can put her off. Just tell her your husband's taking you out for the evening. She won't mind. Oh, I hope not. Hello, Marco, Mr. Baldwin. I want a table tonight for two for about 8.30. Yeah, OK. Oh, uh, by the way, the last meal we had there was fantastic, and I'll tell you what, I'll have the same table if you don't mind. Excellent. OK, bye. Good thinking, Mr Baldwin. You booked us a nice, quiet table, you know, so we can look into each other's eyes without anybody else knows that you're on. Like the sample, Vera? I'm not expensive either, you know. No, I don't eat much. Just three course will do me and a couple of liqueurs and my coffee. Vera? Give me the sample. It has to be in my hard jack, you know. No, if you don't crack on, I won't. Vera, give me the sample. <sighs> sample, Mr Baldwin. Mind you, I admire your principles, you know. Not wanting to go out with a married woman. But take it from me, the best kind. We're grateful. You know, you've not stopped talking for 24 hours and you've still not told me nothing about what happened in London. Rubbish, I've told you everything. I told you about the wine bar and being a croupier and modelling and demonstrating steam irons. Do you remember that time you were demonstrating sausages dressed up as a chicken? Oh, I was got it was a chef, do you mind? The chicken was the week before. The egg promotion. I don't know, in the middle of a flaming supermarket dressed like a flipping Tweety pie. I'm talking about birds. Do you remember the time you got up in Elsie's loft over them pigeons? <laughs> I wandered over into the Ogden. And Hilda Ogden looked up to see a dirty great pair of size knives coming through the ceiling. Oh, don't. She took Elsie the small claims caught over that. Elsie weren't very pleased. Oh, dear, we had some laughs, kid. Hey, you remember that party when Elsie was away and Steve Fisher got me up in the bedroom? You got Steve Fisher in the bedroom, you mean? happened to him? Did you never hear from him? I thought you might. No. All part of my murky past. Probably married by now to some boring female with a couple of boring kids. He was all right with Steve Fisher and very keen on you. That's what I mean about not telling me about London. Were there no fellas? Oh, yeah. Thousands. Millions. No one special. Yeah. And all married. You could have done a lot worse than Steve Fisher. I remember that time he thumped your dad when he was giving the aggro. He was always giving me aggro. Did you ever see anything of him? Why do they keep changing my address? That's not the reason. You always did have big ideas. Still do, kid. So what now? I mean, what are your plans? I'm going down to the Rovers, look at a few old familiar faces. I meant about getting a job, somewhere to live. Oh, something will turn up. It usually does. Right then, I'm off. You sure you're not going to come with? No, Nicky won't be awake for an hour yet. OK, then. Have fun. Oh, I don't know what time I'll be back. You are coming back, then? Well, I've got nowhere else to go, have I? No. Oh, uh, hello. Could I speak to Mr Baldwin, please? Oh, I see. Uh, when will he be back, do you know? Right, I'll, uh, I'll ring back then. No, no message. <coughs> hey, are you fit enough to be in here? No, I'm not. I'm still wobbling on my pins. But I've signed off sick and I'm reporting back to work. Somebody's got to look after that wagon up before you'll get any more lumber. Oh, isn't it amazing? Anybody else want to have a go? Elsie, Hilda, Beth? Forget it, Eddie. It'll be a seven-day wonder. It's easier to dent a flipping car than it is to dent a... Yeah, I'll still have to put up with Moaning Willie here, though, won't I? Well... Talking of armour-plated, look what's just wafted in. Oh, hello, Betsy. Not changed a bit, I see. Well, you must not look too close, that is. <laughs> Kids! 
Where did you land? Where did you come from? And why didn't you let me know you were coming? Oh, you know me, love. It's all spare at the moment. Well, how is everybody? Oh, Sasha. Hey, great to see you, Sue. You bring a bit of sunshine to the gloom. You better not let your fiancé hear you say that. Fiancé? Yeah. Got myself engaged. But that surprises you, right? How about you? <laughs> when you spurn me, Edward, how could I look at anybody else again? <laughs> Still chucking herself at out in pants, I see. Oh. She can chuck herself in my direction any time. Uh, seeing as nobody's going to introduce her, love, uh, my name's Chalky. I'm his gaffer. Oh. Now, can I buy a lovely lady a drink? Well, that's very sweet of you, Chalky. I'll have a large perna with ice, please. Right, love. That's just to let us know she's been to London. Yeah, let's go and sit down, Mother Natter. You will excuse us, won't you? I mean, we've got a lot to catch up on. She used to be my lodger, this one. Mm. I thought it might be again, but Gail says you've got somebody. Gail? Yeah, I stopped there last night. A nice little cosy domestic setup they've got them to. Well, yes, it is now. Hey? Anyway, uh, tell me all the news. I've got about five minutes before I get back to the factory. Oh, that's something else I want to ask you about. Uh, this is Mr. Powell, Mrs. Walker, from the insurance. Good afternoon, Mr. Powell. I do hope I haven't kept you waiting. Now, about this unfortunate fracas. Well, I've had a look at the damage, Mrs. I'm w sure it looks much worse than it really is. You know, that's usually the case, isn't it? And this boy can work wonders. Now, Brian, what it really matters is this. How long will it take to restore my car to its pristine condition? I'm afraid that isn't quite the point at issue, Mrs. Walker. It isn't. Now, the thing is, it's an old motor and I... Ah, but a quality car, practically vintage. Quite so. But we have to go by its present day value, which is unfortunately rather less than what it would cost to repair. So I'm afraid that as far as the insurance company is concerned, the car is a write-off. A write-off? I'm afraid so. <laughs> Just put them down over there, I'll look at them later. Oh, we can look at them now if you like. <laughs> well? Well, as I live and breathe. I knew I shouldn't have run over that black cat. Oh, that is a nice welcome from a former boss. Not to mention a former... Let's leave old skeletons in the cupboard, shall we? Oh, no old skeleton as far as I'm concerned. When I pop off, they'll find I knew Michael Vernon Baldwin engraved on my heart. Yeah. Him and a million others. Hmm. Well... What brings you back to this neck of the woods? Would you believe you? Yeah. Oh, well, it was worth a try. No, I am back because I thought, why be selfish? Why let London have the full benefit of me? Didn't make a go of it down there, then? Me? I was a toast of the town. So you haven't wandered in here without knocking on my head to see if I've got any jobs going? Certainly not. Why, have you? Nope. Well, that's not what Elsie said. She said you were doing a bomb and a new line of bags and she was sure you'd use another pair of hands. Oh. Well, Elsie got it wrong, didn't she? Look, I know I was a troublemaker in the past, but I've grown up now. So I see. A grown-up troublemaker. Now, to tell you the truth, Susie, I just can't afford to take on anyone else at the moment. Oh, well. I just have to take that job as lady in waiting to Princess Di, after all. <laughs> However, what about friends? What about? Lady friends. I wouldn't say no to a nice little intimate welcome back Susie Birch or dinner for two, just for old time's sake. I don't think I'll be stepping on anybody else's toes, because according to Elsie, there was somebody, but she's long gone. Ah. Oh. Well, there again, Elsie got it wrong. I see. Who is she? It's been nice talking to you, Susie, but I've got work to do, you know. But this is outrageous. Sheer lunacy. I mean, the car is damaged, but it's certainly not a total wreck. I've explained to you, Mrs Walker, it doesn't have to be. It's the cost of putting it right. Oh, come on, now. It's only a couple of wings, dent oh, here and there. There's a lot more than that. Look, uh, I've done a breakdown for Mr Powell there. Can I borrow it with sir, please? Right. Two new wings, £120. New headlamps, £60. 
A radiator, 90 pounds. Bumper, about 40 pounds. Paint, 25. Uh, Labour, somewhere in the region of 145 to 160. Look, you can shave a bit of that, Brian. I mean, Mrs Walker is an old friend. I've got a living to earn, mate. But still, I mean, you left at the cost of all the parts. So, you see, we're talking in the region of approximately 500 pounds. And you're telling me that my car isn't worth that? Mrs Walker! The car wasn't worth £500 before the accident. It certainly isn't worth it now. Baldwin's casuals, Baldwin speaking. Oh. Oh, it's you, sweetheart. What a pleasant surprise. Well, I'm afraid it's not, actually, Mike. Um, I'm going to have to let you down. I, I can't make it tonight. Well, why not? Well... Ken's got tickets for this do. It's a probation officer's ball. No, don't laugh. No, it's important to him. Some of the bigwigs who interviewed him for the job of deputy director are going to be there, so I, I'm sorry, Mike. I, I would have loved to have gone, really, but you do understand, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course I do. But if you'd rather spend the evening with a bunch of probation officers instead of me, well... Of course, I understand. Look, I'll, I'll make it up to you some other time, all right? I promise. Bye, darling. Do I gather someone has actually had the temerity to turn you down? Well, it's not unprecedented, you know. I rather thought it was. Now, you listen, Mrs. B. Just because you can run my business better than I can these days, don't you get up at it, OK? <laughs> oh, listen. You've got to get stroppy with Gordon's about these zips, all right? Now I'm going to leave it entirely up to you, because if anyone can get stroppy, you can. Just shows you. For all them years paying insurance, and what for? It's a flaming swizzle. The yeah, H-Way system works, love. Now, if Carl had been worth a couple of thousand, I'd have paid it without a murmur. So you'll not get a penny, then? Of course she will, you daft noggin. They'll give her the market value of the car. Do you mind? I'm perfectly capable of answering for myself. I may be distressed, but I am still perfectly compass mentis, thank you very much. Yes, Mrs. Walker. Still, it's an ill wind, eh? I mean, you'd be able to put all that to a shiny new motor, Mrs. Walker. I mean, the Rover was getting a bit clapped out, wasn't it? It certainly was not clapped out. It had years of roadworthiness in it. Years. Now it's gone. Gone to that great junkyard in the sky. Hey, here it tells me Susie Birchall's been over to see you. Yeah, that's right. And you sent her away with a flea in her ear. I think God struck she what, cocky little devil. She's not used to me saying no to her, you know, it'll do her good. But I told her that you might give her a job. Oh, well, you shouldn't have, should you? You say I told you that. We don't err back with the lemon drops. Exactly. We've got enough stirrers and troublemakers, haven't we, Vera? Oh, I, I know you may, Mr. Bowman. Yeah, I thought you might. Yeah, that I do. She's a right devious monkey on quiet, you know. Look, Susie's a good little worker. She's worked for us before. There's plenty going over there, so it's not unreasonable to suppose there might be a job for her. No, but there isn't, and I told her, all right? I suppose so. Look, she's a survivor, that one. She's as tough as nails. There's no need for you to do your mother in act, all right? Now, stop sulking. Let me buy a drink. Oh, that's kind of you, <coughs> Mr Baldwin. I'm a very kind man. Why don't you tell your pal that? <laughs> So it's um, a gin and tonic and... Uh... Well, I'll have to say, <coughs> you know, if you twist in my arm. Right, and a large glass. Will you have time, though, Mr. Bowman? Yeah. Well, seeing as it's only six o'clock, this doesn't close half past mm -hmm. ten, I think I'll manage it, yeah. No, I mean, uh, I thought you were going out to dinner, you know, that quiet little table in our club. Well, I'm very what? sorry for you, but that has been cancelled. I'm sorry I didn't tell you. But I'll tell you what, I'm thinking of blowing my nose next Tuesday week. Will that do instead? I know you hate to miss anything. And you wanted to wish Birchill on me as well. Anyone, Brian, Susie. Mm, please, love. Oh, no, Char, that was terrific, but I've got to watch my figure. Yeah, looks all right to me. What have you done to this man, Gail? He would have <laughs> said things like that in the old days. Well, he's learned a few tricks since then. Must be that place you went to. Where was it, Brian? Uh, Gatto. They should send all fellas there on a six month stint if that's what it does for them. I could think of a few who could do with the benefit. Get off, will you? All it did give me was a suntan and a few quid in the bank. And taught you how much you miss your wife and child? Yes. It gave you the confidence to open your own business, that's all. Well, in partnership. Yeah. Rolls and Royce was a partnership. Hey, I'll have more tea, though, if there's any going. Yeah, pot needs topping up. I'll do it. So, 
You don't have much luck today, then. Oh, it's early days yet. Something will turn up. That's always been your motto, hasn't it? Oh, it's a good one. Something usually does. Well, it did in London, anyway. What do you come back up here for, then? I miss me old mates up here. Hey, come on, Susie. Now, what was it really like down there? I mean, really? Well, it depends, love, what sort of a person you are. To me, it's the most magical, exciting, wonderful place on Earth. If you've got money. Not here yet. Uh, she should be in any minute. Oh, you do look nice. Oh, thank you. So do you. Hey, it's freezing outside, Uncle Albert. I should wrap up warm if I were you. Oh, we'll uh, give him a lift to the Legion on our way. Yeah, he's still got to walk back, hasn't he? Why don't you share a taxi between a few of you? Yeah, I'm not going to waste no money on taxis. No, you'd rather catch pneumonia instead, oh. wouldn't you? Hello, Hello. Hello. Sorry if I've kept you waiting. All right. Phone rang just as I was leaving. Mavis wanting a natter. <laughs> Hello. Hello. She's a bit down. I think secretly she had hopes of something developing with Victor. You should have asked her around. She could have kept you company. Oh, no, thank you. I brought my book. I know it's selfish, but I'm not really in a Mavis mood tonight. <laughs> OK, we're right then. Yes, well, I am, Uncle Albert. Hello. Right, uh, you know where everything is to make yourself a cup of tea, don't you? I've left uh, some cake and uh, some biscuits don't and that. Of course, so. I'll be fine. Just get along and enjoy yourselves. <laughs> Thanks, love. We shouldn't be too late. Right. Hey, maybe we can find a spare fella at this do tonight. Get Mavis off Emily's back. <laughs> you think she'd fancy a probation officer? Probation officer? Well, it's their do we're going to tonight. Pleasure to be crawling with them. Anyway, see you, love. You prefer being with a bunch of probation officers to being... Oh, my God. Looks like rain. <laughs> when did it ever look like anything else? You can say that again. How many tea bags did you put in that pot? Two. You wafted it over, you mean. Oh, I give up. Either it's too weak to crawl out at pot, or it's that thick you can stand spoon up in it. It is. Right, you'll do, love. Go and get your coat on. There's a good girl. You're in a prickly mood this morning, aren't you? So would you be if you'd been woke up in the middle of the night. Pass that paper. Well, don't look at me. It wasn't me who fell over at milk bottles. No, it wasn't the middle of the night either. It's half past twelve. Well, it seemed like it. Wasn't a bad deal, was it? Yeah, could have been worse. One of the crosses we're going to have to bear, I'm afraid, official functions. It's all part and parcel of being deputy director of social services. If you get it. I thought you were reading your paper. Oh. You didn't want the flipping bears. What did you get them for in the first place? I didn't say I didn't want them. I just said I'm not as keen as I was, that's all. You are keen enough when you first got them. That was our Craig, wasn't it? Him that got on about him. Now he's gone, it's not same, is it? Hey, if you're going to get shot, uh, give us a shout, eh? Well, right, since when were you interested in racing pigeons? You said anything about racing them? I'm on a bussy, can't you? <laughs> you know what you can do. Come on, I couldn't murder a bacon, Sarney. No chance. Eh? Hey? No bacon. No bacon? What do I want bacon for? Well, what's you have for your breakfast? Flipping bird seed? Mm, a couple of slices of bread and marmalade, do me. Bread and marmalade? Oh. A fella shouldn't be allowed on the streets without wrapping himself round a big fry up, especially this time of the year. Yeah, one you're on your own, well, you don't bother as much, do you? You've got to eat, you know, Chalky. And you're not eating enough to keep a sparrow shaping. Listen, when I want a lecture on how to look after myself, I'll ask for it, OK? Now, do you want a broper, don't you? Well, that's your best offer. It is. You survived last night, then? Oh, hello. Yes, yeah, just about. Good do, was it? Oh, yes, I had a ball. What sort of night did you have? Me? Oh, I had a whale of a time. I put a smoochy record on, turned the lights down low and curled up with my back books. Just beggar. And just think where we could have been. A quiet restaurant, table for two. I couldn't think of anything else all night. Honest? Yeah. I could have murdered a steak. I'll thump you in a minute. What about tonight? Oh, I don't know. I'll leave it up to you. Well, Ken did say he was sorry for having mucked me evening with Carol up. Well, I'm not surprised I feel sorry for myself. The least you could do is to pop round and apologise for letting her down. I'll see what I can do. All right. Leave it to you. 
right to today. Flipping day. I've been backwards and forwards to that office like a flaming shuttlecock. Oh, uh, oh. Have you lost some of it? Vinegar. Oh, top shelf. You never used to keep it up there. Oh, that was before I did my little time and motion study. <laughs> time and motion study? Aye. I, I decided to move all the stuff I used a lot down there and put all the other stuff up there. Since then, I've never been able to find a flaming thing. You're lucky you haven't got Nicky emptying your cupboards for you. True. Where's Megan? Susie. Hmm. Gone to the chippy. If you don't get them legs of hers working, she'll forget what they're for. Hey, doesn't she look good? You know, I think she looks years younger when, than when she was here. Didn't it make you sick, eh? I'm not surprised. She's been living the kind of life in London as she has since she's landed back here. As if I haven't got enough to do without fetching and carrying for her. Here? Hang on. I thought she was only stopping here for one night. Yeah, so did I. Try telling her that. She's got skin like a flipping rhinoceros. Well, you could give her a subtle hint. Like what? Like chucking a suitcase into the middle of the main road. Oh, I can't do that, Elsie. She is my mate. Oh, well, you did ask, didn't you? <laughs> You're very quiet, Fred Face. Comic day, is it? It's the slipping car, isn't it? What car? Mrs Walker's car. She's not got one, look. You saw to that. Hey, just a minute, Lynch. All right, all right. Keep your hair on. And that's not funny, either. Well, as long as you're just looking. Well, she's going to need something, isn't she? These are rovers, Fred. Well, I know they are. New ones. Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? Try to decent second hand ones, and there you go. You, you don't know what you're buying. Well, it would to you, wouldn't it? I mean, you wouldn't be paying for it. Mrs. Walker would be, you hope. <laughs> Mrs. Walker, what? Hello, Mrs. Walker. Didn't know you were there. <laughs> Headache uh, better, is it, Mrs. Walker? Very much better, thank you, dear, yes. Do you know you've come at just the right time, Mrs. Walker? Oh. I think Freddie here wanted a word with you, didn't you, Freddie? Well, uh, it's about this car, Mrs. Walker. I think the less said about that, the better. No, uh, not, not the old one, the, the new one. What new one? Well, I mean, you're going to need something, aren't you, Mrs. Walker? I suppose so. Yeah. Well, I did think about second hand, but I thought, no, no, you could be buying yourself a whole heap of trouble. And, well, there again, you don't know who's had it before, you do you? No, I think, by and large, Mrs. Walker, you're going to be better sticking to, uh, sticking to new. New Rovers? Mm. Well, it makes sense, Mrs. Walker, doesn't it? I mean... <laughs> You're not shelling out for MOTs and things. There's a choice of colours. I, I, inside, it'll just be like Cinderella's coach. How much? Well, um, give or take a bob or two. How much, Fred? <clears throat> Eight grand. Eight thousand pounds? Well, as I say, give or take a bob or two. But you'll get it a lovely car, Mrs Walker. <laughs> just imagine driving to them lady licensed vittlers doors in one of them. <laughs> you'll have him cabbage coloured, Mrs Walker. They'll be cabbage coloured. Bed. If you want me, dear, I should be in the back. I can feel my headache is coming on again. Yes, Mrs. Walker. Next time you get any bright ideas like that, Fredface, do us all a favour. Keep them to yourself. Oh, Mother. Do. Well, if you are. No bother. Go on, then. You've twisted me out. <laughs> Tell her why you bothered to ask me in the first place. Because I'm a gent, that's why. Show me again when you're ready, Beth. Right, cock. And where's that mate of yours hiding, eh? Yeah. Kyoki. Oh, I've seen him in here today. Well, I don't know. I'm not his keeper. Used to be a second home, did this. Not ill again, is he? I don't think so. Just a bit down, that's all. Down about what? Well, uh, everything's too much trouble, you know. Can't be bothered. Bothered about what? Well, bothered about tidying up. Bothered about eating proper meals. Said it's not worth it, now he's on his own. Funny how being on your own can affect some people like that, isn't it? It's a terrible thing, loneliness. It is that. Now a Tom's been one of lucky ones. Lucky? Yes, lucky. Lucky he's not known what it was to be on his own. Not like some of us. Oh, hello, Emily. Well, I was hoping I'd catch you. Well, you have. Come on in. Thank you. Fancy a cup of tea? You just about to brew up. Uh, no, thank you. Not just now. Mr. Tatlock's out, I take it. Uh, yes, yes, he is. Emily, is something wrong? Yes, I'm afraid there is. I knew it. 
I said to Ken this morning you weren't looking yourself. Are you... Are you in some sort of trouble? Me? Yeah. Well, it's not me I'm worried about, believe me. Well, who is it then? Well, yesterday I was in Mike Baldwin's office when he had a phone call. It was someone cancelling some arrangement to go out with him last night. I don't remember the exact conversation, but I distinctly heard him say something about, well, if you prefer the company of probation officers to me. You uh, make a habit of listening to your boss's telephone calls, do you? No, of course I don't. I just happened to be there, didn't I? And I would have thought no more about it if I hadn't come round to babysit for you last night and found out where you were going. Look, Emily, if you've got something to say, I think you'd better come straight out and say it. Oh, I think you know what I'm saying, Deirdre. That phone call to Mike was from you, wasn't it? You were the one he was going out with last night. That's what you reckon, is it? Well, what else can I think? There's the phone call, you and Ken going to the probation officer's dance, and I know for a fact you've been slipping out at night to see someone. And I know for a fact what can happen to people who stick their noses in things that don't concern them. So it is true. <laughs> You're the one with all the answers. Look, I came round here as a friend. A friend? Hounding me? Spying on me? Oh, fine, friend. Well, I was hoping I might be able to help. Well, you can start by keeping your nose out of things that don't concern you. I'm quite capable of running my life without help from you or anyone else, thank you very much. I hope you are. Yeah, just half, please. I've never been to London. Not to stop, anyway. I went on a school trip once. Oh, you yeah, haven't missed much, madam, I can tell you. Well, it depends what you're after, doesn't it? I mean, if your idea of nightlife is watching them lock up at the Weatherfield Cemetery... Hey, just hang on a minute. There's some very trendy places in Weatherfield. Yeah, there are. Yeah, I could take you to some places and make your hair curl. Oh, I've seen it. If it's that new hairdresser in the precinct, you mean. I don't remember you complaining when you were here before. That was before, wasn't it? Look, tell us something. If weather feels such a bore, why did you bother coming back here? Well, a girl can have too much of a good thing, can't she? Mm -hmm. And chance would be a fine thing and all. You know, for a girl that's been around as much as you have, I wouldn't have thought you'd have had that much trouble finding digs. I am looking, aren't I? Yeah, with your eyes shut. I am. Well, I wish you'd look a bit harder. Oh, well, it's nice to know your friends are, Hey, hey, that's not fair. No, it's not. I mean, our house just isn't big enough, is it? It's like living in a flipping shoebox, as it is without She's right. you. She's right, right, well. you know, kid. It's not that easy, Elsie, finding digs. Well, I'm digs. sorry, Susie, but you'll have to find somewhere. You can't stop with us. Well, don't look at me. I can't do out about it. Pity. We had some good laughs, didn't we? <laughs> 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 yeah, we did. <laughs> hey, you've still got two beds in your spare room, haven't you? Yes, I have. But I've also got a lodger, in case you've forgotten. Well, I don't mind sharing. Oh, don't you? And what makes you think I want you under my roof? Well, you look like you're doing something to liven up your winter evenings. <laughs> that is very true, but I had something other in mind. Something rather like, uh, say, Paul Newman. Well, I tell you what, the minute he puts his head round the door, I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's settled, then. What's settled? What, what, what about Marion? I've said I don't mind sharing. Well, you might not share, mind sharing, but she might. After all, it's her room, isn't we'll it? just have to have a word with her, won't we? Who, who'll have to have a word with her? You can do it, Elsie. Oh, you. Am I glad I caught you? Well, you're lucky. I'd have been half the way to Yorkshire by now. Still, I'm not complaining. Fancy a drink? Ah, uh, no, Tar. Just listen a minute, will you? Oh, what is it? Ah, <sighs> it's Emily. Emily Bishop? Yeah. She knows, doesn't she? About you and me. Well? Well, she overheard you on the phone yesterday. You know when I rang up to cancel the arrangements? She overheard you saying something about probation officers do. So? Well, she got round to her, our place, found out where we were going, and put two and two together. Yeah, but you weren't the only girl at the probation officers do. Anyone could have phoned me. Yeah, well, it's it's not just that. She actually knows that I've been slipping out at night to see someone. Yeah, but she doesn't know you've been coming here, does she? She knows, Mike. I'm telling you. 
All she's got to go on is a phone call and a suspicion. I don't know. I... Well, I blew up, didn't I? Oh, I see. What are we going to do, Mike? Well, we'll have to put Emily straight on a few points, won't we? Like what? Well, I'll get her to see it from your point of view. She won't. Her conscience won't let her. But I thought she was one of your mates. She is. Best mates I've got. Or at least she was. Right, leave it to me. I'll have a word with her. I think I've got some apologising to do first, actually. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps it would be better coming from you. Well, if you think that's the best way. I do. I think it's the only way. I don't even know Susie Burke Shodell. Oh, she's not your type. Not your type at all. Oh, she's all right, Susie. I wouldn't mind sharing with her any road. Only joking. It's serious, Eddie. Well, what do you reckon? I don't know, Elsie. Look, uh, if Susie did share with you, what difference would it make? To me? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't have any privacy for a start-off, would I? And I wouldn't have so much room. Exactly. Hey, what are you getting at? Well, you can hardly expect her to pay the same rent, can you? Oh, I never thought of that. Yes, I suppose I could let you have it a bit cheaper. And you'd still have a roof over your head. And you'd have a mate to talk to and all. And if we can stash you away 500 quid a year, well, that can't be bad, can it? 500 quid? Ten of a week. Five. Tell you what, we'll split the difference. Call it eight. Six. I'm not a charitable institution, you know. Six. Well, I'm not so much to be knocked down to their house bidding either. Yeah, but 300 quid a year is better than nothing, isn't it? What do you reckon? Oh, when you put it like that. Oh, you give it a try. Oh, OK, why not? Oh, don't say I didn't warn you. I just don't know what to do for the best, Ken. And that is the honest oh, truth. Well, you know what I think, Mrs Walker? I'd go for a new one every time. There's no point in getting a new car, is there? Not with the mileage Mrs Walker does. I mean, just think of your depreciation for a start. Well, there is that. Right, that's before you start to think about insurance, tax, petrol and servicing. Well, how can you have that with any car? In fact, I can't think why you want a car at all. Well, I must have some form of transport, mustn't I? Well, what's the matter with taxes? Taxes? Oh, hang on. Just think what it costs you to keep a car on the road over a year. You can get an awful lot of taxes for that. And no parking problems and no unexpected bills. Do you know, Ken? I think you found the answer. And it's a big weight off my mind. Fred, we should not be requiring that anymore. Oh, tar, mate. Tar a million. Who is it? It's me, isn't it? How did you get it? I've got a key, haven't I? Since when? Since when you were little. Well, you give me that back right away. Not when you're bobbing in here just as and when you please. Suit yourself. What are you doing at any road? I thought you might fancy a bit of old mid to pie for your tea. I've had my tea. Well, I see. Well, I'll leave it here for tomorrow, then. I'm all right, aren't I? Of course you're all right. Now, listen. Do you want me to leave it or not because I can take it home again? Oh, well, go on, then. You might as well put kettle on while you're here as well. I've got a letter from our Bob and Craig. You can read it later. They sent some snaps as well. All right, I will. Where's your tea bags? Run out, lots of coffee. Run out? Why didn't you get some more? Because I didn't know till I used last one, did I? Oh, it's not the only thing you've run out of, is it? I haven't done any shopping lately. I'll get round to it. Honest, fellas. Leave you on your own for five minutes and you're like newborn babies. Any road makers a list. What for? But when I go shopping in the morning, leave it on the table, I'll pick it up. Hey, what are you doing that key? Well, I'm too old to start climbing through windows, aren't I? All oh, right, go on then. I don't suppose a drawed place you haven't turned out any road. Hey, I thought you were going to show me them snaps. Who is it? Prince Charming. Sorry, I've spoke for. You better add be now. I'm nearly ready. Do you know, if you had a fortnight to get ready, you'd still find something else to do. Well, you want me to look nice, don't you? I want you just the way you are. See how that is, will you, then? Right. It's all right, I'm there. I seem to be here, uh, safe list of requirements. Mm, not with me, you're not. Bye, it didn't take you long, did it? Well, never once let the grass grow, eh? Yeah, just look what the wind's blown in. Hi, Eddie. Susie. Oh, I forgot to you two haven't met, have you? Yeah. Marion, this is Susie. Susie, this is Marion. Nice Marian? to meet you. Well, have you had your tea? Yeah, but I'd like a cup of tea if there's mm, one going. Sure. Is something up? Oh, no, it's just that when Elsie said you'd be coming round, I didn't think it'd be quite so soon. 
I think I'd better nip upstairs and do some tidying up. Oh, don't bother on my account, love. Oh, you can say that again. When she's been here a few days, you find the whole house to look as if a tornado was hit oh, it. Oh, that is a nice start, isn't it? She wonder what they actually let herself in for. Oh, hello, Emily. Come in. Um, sorry I couldn't come and see you. I've got Tracy in bed. Well, I don't mind telling you, Deirdre. I thought very hard before I did. You said some very hurtful things to me at dinner time. I know, I know I did, and I'm sorry. Honestly, I, I could have cut my tongue out afterwards. When I think about the things you've done for me. You said you wanted to see me. Yeah, look, come in, will you? You know, the uh, things you said at lunchtime about me and Mike. Well, it's true. We have been seeing each other. Well, I guessed that as soon as you flew off the handle like you did. What I can't see for the life of me is why. I always thought you were so happy with Ken. I was. I am. Oh, I just don't know anymore. How long has it been going on? Me and Mike. Since Christmas. Well... Ken was just so wrapped up in his precious community centre, I don't think he noticed me and Tracy were there half the time. But it's his job. It wasn't his job all over Christmas, though, was it? I mean, he could have come away with us for a few days. He, he could have taken us out somewhere. He could have taken me out for a meal or something. But, oh, no. Not Ken. He was always too tired or, or couldn't be bothered. Just so wrapped up in himself he couldn't see what it was doing to me and mike could i suppose we are all mates you know emily and i had to turn to someone oh i see when your marriage to ken gets a bit hard going you go running off into the arms of another man that's your solution to the problem is it i had to get out of here emily honestly you you can't imagine what it was like just sitting here night after night watching the telly Listening to Uncle Albert snoring his head off. Watching Ken working on his precious papers. Honestly, being married to Ken this last few months has been about as exciting as being hitched to a block of wood. Mike's... Well, he's... He's given me something back in my life. I feel as if I can cope now with Ken and Uncle Albert. I... I don't feel as if the walls are closing in on me anymore. Can you see that? No, Deirdre, I'm afraid I can't. But what harm's it doing? I mean, it's not hurting anybody. What harm is it doing? You embark on a sordid little affair that can devastate the lives of a whole family and you ask what harm is it doing? But it needn't be like that. Not if... Well, you're the only one who knows about it, aren't you? And how long do you think that state of affairs is likely to last? How long before someone else puts two and two together? And how innocent and harmless will it be then, when it gets back to Ken, when it gets back to Tracy? I mean, have you stopped for one minute to think of the consequences? No, you haven't. Well, I think it's high time you did, because if you don't, it's going to be too late, believe me. And I'm not telling you that as an interfering old busybody who's got nothing better to do than stir up trouble for you. I'm telling you that as a friend. A very dear friend who happens to care what happens to you. And Ken. And Tracy. Oh, I don't think there's anything more to be said, do you? Good night. Well, we're back on the street on Monday at the same time and don't miss the omnibus on Sunday afternoon at five o'clock. Well, next, the professionals from Granada Plus, home of the hits.